met the legal requirements for official approval. In the process that begins today and ends Thursday, candidates are expected to submit a list of 2,000 voters from at least 24 counties out of the 47. The names are expected to be accompanied by signatures as well as a copy of the ID. The IEBC has also instructed candidates to ensure that their academic credentials are approved by the Commission of Higher Education if they studied abroad. Last week, IEBC Chairperson of Bukati announced that from today, he will meet with all the presidential candidates or their representatives at Bomas of Kenya to explain some of the legal Legal requirements before the official approval, which will be issued between May 29th and June 10th. And as Miola Mojo, one Kenya coalition party leader, Raila Odinga, has promised to improve the livelihood of Kenyans within the first 100 days of his tenure, Raila, who took his presidential campaign to Narrow County, accompanied by his running mate Martha Karua, said his administration would focus on universal health care, social protection programs, and eradicating corruption. Raila and Karua have in the last couple of days held a series of campaigns in Narrow County in a bid to move voters as we approach the August 9th general elections. Now, Deputy President William Ruto says fostering unity and enhancing the economy remains the core agenda that is in line with his bottom-up economic model. Speaking while leading the Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade in a vote-hunting mission in the Rift Valley, the DP urged the electorate not to be lured into supporting their opponents, saying his track record in the region puts him ahead. While boasting that Kenya Kwanzaa commands popularity in the central region, the leaders told the electorate against shifting their political preference. Still on matters politics, and Jimmy Wanjigi and his running mate Willis Otieno have told residents in Siaya County that they are aiming at forming an all-inclusive government focusing on the youth should they win the polls slated for August 9th. Wanjigi and Otieno, while speaking at St. John's Anglican Church near during a church service, retweeted their campaign pillar of economic growth, telling the congregants that it was time for young people to take charge of the country's top leadership. Wanjigi also promised the residents of Siaya that they will revive the economy and create employment for the young people in Kenya who remain jobless despite several promises by the government. In addition, the Safina presidential hopeful gave his word to overhaul the education system, which he describes as non-working for parents, students and teachers, saying parents were never called upon to approve it. And the Kenya Kwanzaa Lands presidential running with regard to Gashagwe and Mombasa governorship hopeful Mike Sonko are among the leaders the National Integrity Alliance has red carded from contesting in the August polls. The leaders were announced as part of this year's NIA red card campaign, which aims to buy individuals with questionable integrity from being elected into public office in the general election. Rigathi and Sonko joined Kirinyaga Governor Anwai Guru, Malindi MP Aisha Jumwa, and Bekasi East MP Babo Wino, former Nairobi Governor Evans Kidero, as well as Capsarate MP Oscar Sudi, who have all been flagged. NIA said the Red Card 2022 list was generated from authentic and trusted investigative reports. And President Uhuru Kenyatta has urged the World Health Organization to expedite pre-qualification of locally produced health products to ensure market access. Addressing the 75th World Health Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland, President Kenyatta said that the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic exposed the over-dependence of developing countries to external markets, which he noted hamper efforts to speed up vaccine production and supply. The head of state emphasized the need for collaboration among all stakeholders across the globe to address the existing gaps. Now, Mombasa County Commissioner John Utiena has put parents in Likoni on notice over claims that they have been protecting and hiding their children who are members of armed juvenile gangs. The CC said that in any case where a parent is found hiding a juvenile gangster, they will also be arrested and punished as accomplices of criminal activities. Otieno, who was speaking during a community baraza in Tibuani area in Likoni sub-county, said that he is saddened by the escalating cases of machete armed gang of youth, some as young as 12, where they attack residents. And President Joe Biden arrived in Japan for the second leg of the Asian trip underlining U.S. commitment to the region, but overshadowed by concern that North Korea will test a nuclear weapon after ignoring Washington's attempt of outreach. Biden, making his first trip to Asia's president, flew to South Korea into Yokota Air Base outside Tokyo, where he will meet with Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Emperor today. This is Newswire, Dennis Aceto. Good morning.
you know when you see someone being jailed, a governor or two or someone who stole, then people will fear. Because our problem is not the borrowing, it's the stealing. We've become actually a nation of thieves. The only thing we lack is an opportunity to steal. The guys who put the Bible and say I'm a Christian and all that, and you know they're thieves, you tell what you have stolen four times. If you know that you have property or anything that you have stolen, just return and say, my God does not allow me to hold stolen things. We are also a reflection of you. Because you elect us. You know, we don't get into our office by ourselves. We are a reflection of the people who mm. elect us. We don't want to go to the streets. We have a constitution that enables us to assert our will. When the legislature have now been taken as hostage by the executive for whatever reason, we are now bound by what they want us to do. This is just outside the realms of reality. We have impunity written into the DNA of our political class. How old were you <laughs> when you learned that Jesse Lokop is Jesse Lawokov? I can not say it very well. You know, I'm Jesse Lokop. And everyone knows. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Monday morning. And what does it look like? Not much in terms of traffic on these Nairobi streets. Coming into the CBD off the Thicker Superhighway, coming off Jogo Road, getting into the CBD as well. Mombasa Road is clear and, f uh, clear and free, as is Ngong Road this morning. Not seeing much coming off the Thicker Superhighway, just past the Utali Drift is where we see most of the action today. Let's keep it moving, folks, and then let's talk. Spice FM KE on Twitter, text 40127. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. This is the Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin. Agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not hey, down. Hey, good morning. This Nine is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. 2022. Two. Kenya's biggest conversation. We could, hey, who sits here and just brings back the mic's gain to zero? You're saying. <laughs> and back even the table is cold. Surely. Chair is cold, room is cold, even mic is cold. Table cold. <laughs> Are you doing city? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. It's one of those Mondays. Yeah. And it feels like a Thursday. Buana. Today is Monday. Then there will be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday, Saturday, Ooh. Sunday, Monday, aye, Tuesday. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Anyway, Ndu? Yes. Jewewe. J Mimi. Mm. Good morning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're feeling warm. Mm -hmm. You had a good weekend. What happened? Come on, what happened to the weekend? I can't even remember. Yeah, that's what happens. When that happens, uh. ha. That's what happens. Uh. You get into Monday without feeling any cold. <laughs> mm, you come into Monday with a very, very warm <laughs> heart and body. Lakini mko salama? Si, 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 tuko sawa tu buwana. Si, unatuwa na hapa? That doesn't mean mko salama. Tuko sawa tu buwana. Excuse me. Nani? Wewe. You should know. 
Mm. Ikuwa mkenya, mm. ni kuzoea tu. Hapa <laughs> kurudi mali ni mitoka. <laughs> no, well, you've lived here long enough. You must have known how to zoea. zoea tu. How to zoea life. Mm. Mm. Yani, you just become at least. Sasa wewe uko at least, sai. Ah, ni uko at least kabisa. Get used to it. Mm. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation, everybody. We hope you had a good weekend and you'll have a fantastic week ahead. We have a lot in store for you today. Quite a bit, can I tell you? Yes, we'll have conversations. Today we'll have the Day of the Deputies or the Running Mates. Um, the Running Mate, the Laikipia Governor, Derito Moridi, has picked a new Running Mate because his current Deputy Governor is going for Senate. Okay, I'm on a graduate. So now, Mr. Dirito Muridi has picked Michael Waigua as a, the running mate for the Laikipia governor's seat. And we want to understand these running mates when they go into office. Uh, what do they bring to the campaign? Mm. Because we've seen that whole conversation and we even had it briefly on Friday. Yep. Martha Karua and Dirito uh, Gashagua. Not Dirito, what's his name? Uh, Regadi Gashagua. <laughs> um, Dirito is his, is his late brother. Regarding Ashagua, what exactly do does he bring to the table? The table, and we wondered about that, and so we want to have that conversation again today. Uh, Michael Waigua is the running mate for Dorito Moraithi in Laikipia. Professor Philip Kaloki is the running mate for uh, Mr. Pauli Kapigade in Nairobi. Philip Kaloki, the professor, will be with us at 8 a.m. And we'll be asking him, so, uh -huh. what's the mathematics? <laughs> what's the mathematics? It's, mm. You come from Waipa, and we know where Waipa is. Are you still with the Waipa? Are you going? Are you staying? What's your mathematics? What do you bring to the table? At 7 o'clock, when we had the IEBC commissioner at the beginning of the week last week, we talked about the minor care judgment that basically the... Court of Appeal interpreted the Constitution and said the way the Constitution is set, it says that results that are declared at the 290 constituencies for the presidential election, those are the final results. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was an argument because IBC used to transmit those results, I mean used to project those results on the screen at uh, Bombers of Kenya and say these are just still provisional results and yet they received the results from the uh, counties. So uh, what's the what's the position? One of the lawyers who took this particular case to court is uh, called Willie Sotieno. He also happens to be the man who was named by Jimmy Wenjege as his running mate for Safina at the presidential mm -hmm. election. But he'll be here, here with us, Willie Sotieno, to explain this judgment and what exactly it means. You've started feeling cold. I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> you guys have some kind of influence over me. So those conversations coming mm. up, uh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Tell us about COVID. <coughs> okay, uh. so some worrying trends around the world where we've seen an increase in some COVID uh, cases. Um, so we've seen Saudi Arabia wake up once again and ban travels to India and 15 other countries over COVID outbreaks following the re-outbreak is what is being called of COVID-19 and the rapid surge in the number of daily COVID infections over the past few weeks. This has been happening um, in the Saudi capital as well as other cities uh, in the country. And it's not just a Saudi trend, but it looks like it is now a global trend. Just the other day, we've seen the positivity rates in Kenya, for example, rise to 2.1%. Over the last 24 hours, that's 0.9%. But it looks like we're on an upward trend now with this and so again bringing back the conversations that the world health organization has been having saying look we've seen the decline of covid infections but that doesn't mean we're waving goodbye to covid and we still need to be extremely vigilant and uh, if the last few days or the last couple of weeks has been any indi indication that uh, this is happening then perhaps uh uh Hebrew Jesus could be right all right. Mm. Let's look at what's happening in North Korea before <coughs> I give you Kenya's numbers. They're fighting COVID with traditional medicine. It's grappling with the spread of COVID in an unvaccinated population without access to effective antiviral drugs. And people are being advised to try alternative medicines such as drinking herbal tea and gargling salt water. So the country sealed its borders to try and insulate itself from the pandemic. Its leadership has so far rejected medical support from outside. And... Um, Herbal teas are one of the things that they're saying. 
um, <laughs> according to the ruling party newspaper, Rodong Sin Moon, it recommended drinking teas with ginger and honeysuckle and a willow leaf drink. All right. This is what they're actually telling <coughs> the majority of the population to get on and do. Tea might soothe some COVID symptoms, which we know, such as sore throat or cough, and help hydration when patients are losing more fluid than normal. But they are not a treatment for the virus itself. Gargling salt water. State media interviewed a couple of people who mentioned gargling with salt water morning and night. And interestingly, a thousand tons of salt has been sent to Pyongyang to make an antiseptic solution. Some studies suggest gargling and nasal rinses with salt water could help combat viruses that cause the common cold. But there's little evidence that they slow the spread of COVID. So those are the things that are currently going on. Knowing that you have a, a situation whereby you're grappling uh, in terms of health, but then saying, look, we're not accepting any external assistance and we're going to do with what we have or what we can get. And that's the position of North Korea today. In Kenya, 20 new cases from a sample size of 2,219 then gives Kenya a positivity rate of 0.9%. And for the first time in nine weeks, there have been two recorded deaths from COVID-19 in the country. Global numbers are looking now at 527,683,991. Mm. Yep. Okay. <laughs> 17 minutes after six, we are live streaming the show. You know where? Spice of MKE on YouTube and Facebook. And if you're online, you know what you need to do. Say hello to us. We will be doing a roll call and acknowledging everybody who says that they are online at this particular time of day. <laughs> This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul, and nostalgic ballads. Make some noise. Yeah. You're listening to Spice FM. Are you looking for employment and are tired of sending job applications without any response? Gone with no response? Tarmacking is now a thing of the past, thanks to Skiza. Dial star 811 star 1 star 21 hash and subscribe to a ringback tune that reflects your qualifications only for 1.5 bob a day. All right, and looking your at cloudy conditions in Nairobi this morning at 18, we'll see highs of 27 and lows of 17. It's partly cloudy at 15 in Nakuru, we'll see highs of 26 and lows of 15. While Nyeri is partly cloudy as well at 15, we'll go to highs of 26 and lows of 13. The clouds are up also in Eldoret this morning at 14, highs of 24 and lows of 13. It's mostly clear at 25 in Mombasa, highs of 31 today. And we're looking at cloudy conditions in Malindi at 25. We'll see highs of 31. It's 22 degrees and mostly cloudy in Kisumu, highs of 27 and lows of 19. While it's mostly cloudy at 18 in Kakamega, highs of 27 and lows of 15. It's raining this morning in Kampala at 21, highs of 26 and lows of 18. While mostly clear conditions in Dar es Salaam at 22, would go to highs of 32 and lows of 21. Cooling down considerably in Johannesburg this Monday, it's 5 degrees. Going to highs of 17 today. Clear conditions at 24 in Lagos. We'll see highs of 31. When we'll see highs of 29 in Kinshasa, where it's currently clear at 21. 30 degrees and sunny into late afternoon Tuesday in Beijing. We'll see highs of 34 and lows of 18. Paris, rain this morning at 16. Highs of 20 and lows of 11. It's also warming up some in London. It's currently 14 degrees and clear highs of 18 and lows of 11 and 23 degrees sunday nights in new york coming into monday we'll see a warm high for new york of 32 and lows of 17. classic soul r b smooth jazz neo soul and nostalgic ballads Make some noise. Yeah. you're listening to spice fm Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 20 minutes of 94.4. Spice FM, Nairobi. Good morning, Muga, Eric, and Ndu. It's been a rainy weekend here in Sugarland. I love it. Sugarland. Our repulsive male politicians are now throwing insults at Martha Karua because she's a woman challenging them in their dominated field. They should know times have changed. Mm. 
Hey, all right. Good morning from Etihad, Manchester. <laughs> okay. Chris Juma says, good morning to you. Khalid Hassan says, good morning. Hello, guys. Mukwana Kagota. Um, David Mwana says, Ndu is feeling cold. Yeah, man. But I think that'll be fine in a, in a while. He's looking forward to today's proverb, Buana City. Gasheri Wambijiwe says, good morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday to you. Mtwapa in Kilifi is where Sir Barreto is this morning. And Mwangi Jaroge calls himself lucky, as lucky as an eagle catching a mouse that has just eaten salt. From Mombasa <laughs> County, he's tuned in. <laughs> Berry Nogema says, good morning from Kawasukari. Mombasa is tuned in as well. That's where Robert is. And Kenyon Sheriff says, hello and good morning. Samantha Harris, she says, it's still Sunday. Okay. Well, you know, get on that train. Yeah. But it all depends on where you are, Samantha. Mm. So it indeed might still be Sunday. Watuga says, yes, I should slow down. Yeah, it was a quick start to the morning. Eli Sikowo says, the blackest man in Bungoma County, Tokea Maneno, yeah. Eh, okay. We've marked you present from Mount Elgon, Eli. And Amos Freeman says, Kimi is locked. Maneno, yeah, Sambocho in Mount Elgon. That's a place. Mm. Ah, voila. Mm. And Willie is tuned in from Birunda this morning. Honorable Opio Omondi says, I am Opio Omondi from Muranga. Uh -huh. I always tune into the biggest conversation every morning before I go for my classes. Uh -huh. He says, please discuss the red card campaign that has put Gashagua and Babu in the red lights. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. We'll do that. Everybody welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation city. Mm. So you do like that. Yes. Still in Uganda, uh -huh. last day, mm. then tomorrow we move again to mm -hmm. another country. Okay. But when I'm in East Africa, okay. okay, do not belittle what you did not cultivate. Do not belittle what you did not cultivate. Mm -hmm. mm. Don't look into your neighbor's farm and say, Look at that maze. Look at that tired vegetable patch. Yeah, look, it's a So to, to my own, to my own bear. Surely. <laughs> <laughs> do not belittle what you do not cultivate yes okay pretty straightforward isn't it pretty straightforward as far as proverbs go yes all right so let's look at the newspaper headlines www.standardmedia.co.ke premium content online <laughs> the story they're promoting today how I sank six million shillings in UDA nominations. <laughs> Nyeri man's bitter lesson in political investment. Six million shillings gone. Nomination. Nominations. <laughs> Ticket onge. <laughs> Election poof. <laughs> It's not just the only poof. Mm. <laughs> Six million shillings also poof. 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 <laughs> it's also poof. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Oh, yeah. It's funny because it's not funny. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's, it's a story of very many people. Very many people. People borrow money. People sell their property just for a nomination. Hedge your bets and then you lose everything. Some people, you know the sad bit is there are some people who actually do this wanting to, meaning well. Sure. To come in and make a change. Yes. But then you are outspent by a thug, <sighs> a very charismatic thug, who gets the ticket. <coughs> anyway, what are you looking at in the papers? We mean? Mm. Okay. So, on the front page of the Standard today, I mean, yes, there are many important things going on. But it's just interesting, this sentiment that's coming from Deputy President William Ruto, where he's saying, keep off elections. He's warning the CSS. Kenya Kwanzaa team moves to consolidate Rift Valley Stronghold with firm warning to Cabinet Secretaries Fred Matiangi, specifically, and Joe Musheru, not to interfere with election preparations, as Azimio leader Raila Odinga revives the ghosts of Mao Forest debate. It's uh, carried on page six and seven today. This is interesting because he goes right for the jugular and tells them, you guys... Stay out of it. You have a job to do. Stick to your job. This business we will not allow. Azimio Laumo, uh, yeah. So um, Deputy President William Ruto and his Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade took their campaigns to the Rift Valley yesterday and over the weekend, where they asked cabinet secretaries to keep off the elections. The leaders who combed the South and North Rift regions pointed an accusing finger at some government officials for allegedly interfering with the work of the IEBC. 
Dr. Ruto led a team in Eldoret, Wasingishu County. His running mate, Mathira MP Rigathe Gashagwa, was in Karicho County, while ANC party leader Musiala Mudavidi campaigned in Baringo. So, with opinion polls showing a hotly contested race between the DP and Rilo Dinga, the Kenya Kwanzaa team accused Cabinet Secretaries Fred, Fred Matiangi of Interior and Joe Mushero of ICT and Margaret Kobe of Public Service of alleged interference in election preparations. Ruto steered clear of the matter when he addressed rallies. <laughs> the details of the alleged interference by the three Cabinet Secretaries um, because they did not provide evidence. Um, addressing rallies in Baringo, Mudavadi said, we must have a free and fair election. IEBC should maintain its independence. We don't want interference with through the ministries of ICT, Interior or any other. It's not the first time that um, this happens. Mm. It's not even the first election that we see the minister in charge of Interior or Internal Security being uh, accused of interfering with the electoral process no i think it happened mm, over and over and over again i think this is the first election though mm. that we have seen with such fervor that the side that is supported by the state as it were mm. is getting the jabs by the other side saying that this is a state-sponsored project and so this just provides more in terms of accusation not quite actually mm. Not quite, actually. I remember uh, just the other day, um, <laughs> <laughs> Rai Laudinga accusing the late John Mishuki. Exactly the same. Saying, Mishuki, you think Mishuki thinks he's the one who's running this election. Mishuki should be told. At that time, Mishuki was a minister for interior. And this was in the, uh, which election? Just the other election of 2013. Mm -mm. I'm saying. And then before that, because the, the accusation here was that the, these two young men, called Uhuru and Ruto, mm. are now uh, the state projects. Mm. And uh, Mishuki and others in government are trying to support them, trying to prop them, and they're therefore trying to interfere with the election. Mm. Same kind of accusation. Sure. Isn't it? But in this election, we've mm. not seen a head of state then who becomes a chairman of a coalition mm. whereby, uh, the again, the project comes out to be the case. So mm. it's just another feather in their cap here to say, look, Here's another opportunity that you guys are using to nail this thing uh, together. In this um, election, yeah. we've also seen for the first time a deputy president who is in another party, mm. a different party from the one in which he got elected in, still stays in the state house mm. and is officially in the opposition. So mm. it is a season for all manner of strange things. Yeah. And first things happening. Yes. Yeah. Because the issue of with the government being involved, yes, if the shoe is on the other foot, it is appropriate that you should complain. Mm -hmm. But as Eric puts it, in this country, how can the government not interfere? What do you mean? The government must interfere. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> it has an interest. It must interfere. <laughs> and it, the government is using state resources. But it's the government. Which other resources do you want it to use? <laughs> well, I think well, I, it's, it's a very dicey and, and um, the line is quite pretty thin. You see, like the accusation against the uh, cabinet secretary for information, Joe Mushero, mm. where he's just making a remark and saying, you know, we are working to ensure that this election is free and fair. <laughs> and then we are working with Baba. You're working with Baba as who? And then you sat in the front row at the unveiling of, you sat in the front row at the unveiling of his running mate. You know? So that guy got his neck <laughs> jumped on. <laughs> 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 but it is clear the Honorable Minister mm. is not a politician. Mm. Because this is what happens when you <laughs> want to say something which you think what? <laughs> what? <laughs> which raw Safi? Who's raw? <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> the, the thing I find lamentable about this whole process eh, mm. is that we keep hearing this and you don't hear enough of what these candidates say they're going to do. Because mm. the whole purpose, what we're going to elect leaders on, is what they plan to do for the country. That's really what we want to elect these leaders for. And we expect them to be telling us what it is they want to do, hopefully, hopefully, with a prayer, that they will tell us how they plan to do it. Mm. Okay? Not throw broad statements of this and huge amounts in our face about how it is they're going to do this. No, no, no. How do you plan to do this. Show us. Explain to us. But no, instead, no. No, no, no. We must be treated to this circus all over again. Mm.
it's the constant thing it just depends on who who's on the other side yep and they know the script yep you just jump over to the other side you pick ah ebuli ni patile script yako let's let the script yako ha so minister of interior this time is to Eugene Weka Matiang same thing that you're going to say it changes it just changes half past six. let's take this quick break see how the roads are looking like this monday morning and then we look at other news super headlines This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul and nostalgic ballads. Make some noise. Yeah. You're listening to Spice FM. Standard Group's Farm Kenya initiative is the umbrella entity for all agriculture related channels, activities and investments. The media platforms under the Farm Kenya initiative include the Smart Harvest weekly pullout in the Saturday Standard, KTN Farmers TV, a 24-hour agribusiness TV station, Maisha Kilimo, a weekly agriculture show on Radio Maisha, AgriTalk on Spice FM's morning show The Situation Room and Grind na Agribiz on Vibes Radio morning show Morning Vibes. Find us online at www.farmers.co.ke, an integrated website that creates and aggregates agri-content, hosts a digital marketplace, and wide range of agri-data. Other platforms include specialized events such as the annual Mukulima Expo, quarterly Farmers Kenya Breakfast, and dedicated social media platforms at Farm Kenya 254. Farm Kenya. Working to Opening up Monday morning program. with just a little bit of traffic here and there. It's building up on the thicker superhighway this morning. I'm going to take some time to get out of this one. Um, we'll probably see traffic then spill over towards the Utali Drift, which, yes, is what we are seeing. How far back does it tail? Uh, we're looking at it going towards that outer ring junction, uh, but we'll keep an eye on that. But it's building up quite considerably. So on Waiaki Way, that looks all right. Uh, you shouldn't have any problem getting out of that area today. Traffic there has not built up at all. Jogo Road is where you'll see some action. Uh, coming from Hamza is where you see the most of it. Getting out towards Landis Road should be all right. Both directions in and outbound. It's okay. Uh, the Kamkunji roundabout also not too much in terms of traffic. Langata Road is building up. The Southern Bypass looks pretty good. There's an option for you to get into the city. And we're also looking then on Mombasa Road. Out towards the city, not a problem whatsoever. Just a little bit here and there as you're getting towards North Airport Road and then out towards the Eastern Bypass. Let's talk in half an hour. Spice FM, KE on Twitter. Text four zero one two seven. Spice FM, Malindi. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. There's a very interesting Mornings thing. Done right. <clears throat> Talks about people who are misers, okay? <laughs> Miser is somebody who is, does not want to spend money just like that. Really needs. Does not want to spend his money. His mo- yes. His, his or money her money. Or her money. Yeah. Willy nilly. Mm. Just like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, what you spend do you where is, what is the problem? Those ones that will never say pesa mingi pesa uh, otas. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those ones will be like, hey, you know, sina pesa. Now, according to psychologists, this is a psychological trait, and it is directly linked to potty training as a child. According to counseling psychologist Lois Okello. Being a miser as an adult sometimes starts during potty training as a child. During potty training, she says, a child learns being free is a biological process. But with poor potty training in which a child learns to hold on, then the freedom is restricted and it ends up interfering with biological development. And the child grows up retaining pretty much everything. (laughs) Literally. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yes. Another clinical psychologist, Jack Gadu, on her part, says there are psychoanalytical and psychosocial theories that influence the development of children, with one of the more famous being by Austrian psychologist Sigmund Freud. 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 Uh, the theory states that when, ch- when the child is between the ages of 18 months and 3 years, there's a state and a stage called the anal stage. 
they get the pleasure when they realize that they can control when and where to empty their bowels. Freud identified the personality traits known as anal triad, in which the people who possessed them had excessive conscientiousness, conscientiousness, <laughs> a concern with neatness and cleanliness. They were also obstinate, being stubborn, rigid, besides a high degree of parsimony stinginess with money and time. Freud discovered that these traits were found in people who were emotionally charged with defecation, taking pleasure in emptying their bowels and in holding back. He concluded that this anal trait originated in childhood obsession of orderliness was a reaction against their fascination with filth while obstinacy and miserliness were sublimated or rather were socially acceptable expressions of fickle retention. Okay. Okay. So a stingy person likes to hold everything in. Uh, stingy mm. even with their <laughs> bowel movement. So it may not be something that was necessarily their fault. Mm. How they were trained much earlier in life Interesting. Very interesting connection. Let a child just go to jump out there, go. You feel like going, go. Mm. Then that child will be free with their money. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What are you looking at, City? That's a quite, it's just a funny theory. <laughs> no, it's an interesting theory mm. and uh, Freud did his homework mm. among his people mm. and he found that <laughs> his people had those problems. <laughs> and said it's all of you humans. Yes, he decided it's all of us and uh, unfortunately <laughs> many of us don't have the problems that uh, his community had even in the time he lived. Even with potty training. This potty training. Yeah. We were potty trained. Mm. Mm. Clearly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were told to go out. I mean, go out. And, and go. go out. And that was it. Go out. Mm. Them, they were busy trying to stay in. Mm. Us, in. What's in the business daily? Man, there's a lot of bad news here. I'm trying to find something that can cheer me up this morning. Mm. And I find nothing that is... Just give us the bad news. It could cheer us up. All right. Mm. Let's look for some really bad news. Wow. British funds plan... British fund plans 81 billion Kenya shillings investment in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is slightly good news. Mm -hmm. Kenya private firms could get investment... Could get investments amounting to 81.4 billion, that's $700 million, over the next five years from British international investments be... I, I, not BBI, BII, mm -hmm. which previously traded as CDC Group, ah. Commonwealth Development Corporation. Those guys. Those guys. Who had invested in uh, housing finance, the, in the Bricham. Guys, uh, in the uh, Buruburu. Buruburu Estate those, and the yes, others. Those guys. Right. Those guys. So now they're called BII. BII, British International Investment. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. BII has pledged, pledged being the operative word here, mm. investments worth $7.5 billion. Mm. Hey, hey, this is keeps increasing. $873 billion in Africa. And the fund's chief executive, Nick, or Dan, this is Zungu names. <laughs> Dan Ho. Uh -huh. Dan Ho. Huh? It's written Don Hoy, but I'm, I'm, pronounced, I'm sure it's pronounced Don Hoy. Donahue. Yes, okay. <laughs> Says Kenya, how they pronounce these things. Kenya has the potential of taking up 10% of the capital commitment going by previous investment trends. Okay? Yeah. I continue. Mm -hmm. Right? Kenya's $500 million. Kenya's $500 million is about 10% of our current portfolio. So if you look at $7.5 billion that I mentioned, it would be disappointing if we did not do a 700 million investment in Kenya. That was now the the other 81 billion that I mentioned earlier. Uh -huh. Over the next few years, says that gentleman whose name I mentioned earlier. Okay. 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 The British fund has rebranded from CDC as part of its new strategy strategy uh -huh. change name uh -huh. to identify with the UK and shift. Towards mm, so they won't, don't want to be Commonwealth. They want to be we, yes. no, 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 no. We're not a Commonwealth. Commonwealth no. No, 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 British. British. They want to shift towards climate finance and digital space. Right. Climate finance. Yes. 
who are they by the way who's cdc and who's bi who's bi is CDC it a group of investors BIA. is it um, is it an investment group like centum my no or trans what was the other one transcentury mm. is it like that is it government funded government has an interest government Which government has an interest? Well, no, commonwealth who it was called it commonwealth because they kept they, they were investing in the commonwealth, in the commonwealth. Th- that's why they called it commonwealth so that yeah. people could feel that they are part and parcel of the commonwealth uh-huh. but now since brexit they decided there is no harm in just identifying yourself for who you really are so it's british <laughs> be true to yourself <laughs> yes yeah. this thing of commonwealth thing that yeah it's all good and well but it's british so they are british okay you know one of the things that seems to be a trend mm. and why this story is a bit heartening mm. at some level is that there is a model that many countries are now using now we had it because we also had icdc mm. icdc had it been allowed to flourish and go in the direction it was intended it was supposed to do this very same thing locally meaning source funds and be able to invest in commercial and in industrial complexes and the government was supposed to put some money into it had it also grown fully for all we know it would have been the trading arm and the investment arm of this country as within the east african community yeah. that's what it would have been yeah but it's a model that other countries use so you have a quasi commercial entity government has money in it but that's what it does mm. the beauty of such loans is that they are long term meaning they even offer you a moratorium some couple of years you don't have to pay then you pay slowly but the thing about this is not a grant mm. it's a loan or it's an investment the, the thing about investments is this it gives the country that has offered this particular financing a foothold in the country yeah. gives them a say yeah. so they have a stake in your country yeah this is how you spread influence mm. okay yes and there was a worrying story on the front page of the nation mm. um uh, so so there's two but I just want to shed light quickly on this education issue where hundreds of students kind of like what we mentioned last week getting into high school this year or even returning to high school but cannot do that because they just don't have the funds to do it mm. they don't have the money and and this is not a crisis unfolding this is a crisis in full blown stage right now in the country that too many students too many families are not able to send their children to school yeah. for lack of fees and i said it a few days ago and i'm saying it again and it's probably something that we're going to look into a little bit more over the coming days but there must be something that can be done when you have a rising population a rising percentage of students who cannot attend school because they don't have school fees i mean it it and we're talking about the public system here hmm. so that's just shining light on that and we'll come back to it for sure to revisit you know it's it's um we need to have a bigger conversation as a country yes on what exactly we need to do with guaranteeing basic education for all because yes it's a it's credit to its due the government has made these steps of saying all right let's have free primary education whatever degree of free prim- primary education is available let's have a policy of 100% transition that nobody should drop out um let's have um a- education being supported especially for day secondary schools let's have all this and the other and i think we just need to make sure that everybody can get proper 100% free education up to 18 years absolutely that is basic primary and secondary it's worth it's worth looking into that's a conversation that we ought to be having even as we talk about okay our family receives 6000 shillings blah 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 and all the other 50 billion shillings for the youth can you imagine if we just basically had a conversation on saying we want to guarantee education it sh- and which it should be which it should be guaranteed that there should never be this question there should never be this doubt there should never be this embarrassing situation mm. where you have a form 3 girl who is walking through the streets asking please 20000 shillings back to school. is what would send me back to school yeah it should not be the case and those are the ones who can be in uniform and get out into the streets there are many who are hidden between the four walls of their houses and don't come out because they don't have the wherewithal and honestly if we're at that place where children can't go to school and we're talking we're not talking about 1 to 10 we're talking about hundreds yeah who have not gone back to school this year this term you know the this discussion about the education sector mm. 
as you very correctly put it, needs to be very wholesome and it must get up to the level of discussing TVET as mm-hmm. well as university education. Yep. Mm-hmm. There is a problem. Mm-hmm. There's something wrong. There is a problem and that problem is being glossed over. Mm-hmm. Because right now when you listen to the pronouncements that are often made by the CS, they're confusing. One day you're being told this, the next day you're being told this, the next day you're being told this, the next day you're being told this. But beyond that, you look at just the structure of our education system, just the structure of it. Mm. Capitation. What is it that the student benefits? The students benefit from this money which the government gives mm. based on the number of students you have, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, who do you think is likely to benefit most? If you have a school with 100 students and there's another school with 1,000 students, who do you think is likely to see the light of day in a greater way? Precisely. Now, where are the bulk of our students? In the uh, high population schools? Precisely. And also, they also happen to be in our rural areas, mm. in the so-called sub-counties. Oh. Now, so when you're talking of investment, the bulk of this money seems to go to the big national schools and the big county and extra county schools. Mm. Okay? And it's understandable. But what about where the majority of our students actually are? Mm. What happens to them? I mean... There is money that ought to be given. There is money that is purpose for it. There are all these things that we keep talking about, and they're huge amounts. Somehow, there seems to be some discordance somewhere. I think there's a big disconnect, because I'm hearing you asking that question, and to me, the one with more students receives more money. Yes, they do. So that means that the school that has more students, because it's receiving capitation per child, yes. ends up with a lot more money that they could do something with. Yes. So what do they do with that money? Precisely. And what about the schools that are genuinely needy? You see, mm. the schools that have uh, many people, they've been there for some time, and that's why parents take their children there. Mm. It's understandable. What about those schools who also have students who want the same thing but don't have these benefits? Mm. And then we take this matter to the point where what do we do? We subject all these students to the same exam, to the same curriculum, to the same, same, same requirements. As mm. though the circumstances were the same. Or the, the, the circumstances couldn't be more different. Mm. And then you move from county to county. And you look at the disparity and the differences and the difficulties. This conversation is a long overdue. But it must be had. Yeah. It must be had. Because there's an injustice that is taking place. And is continuing to take place. Mm. It's this one we, we, we really must, we must get there as a country. We must get to that conversation and guarantee it's in the constitution. It's a right. It's a right. So how do we guarantee the rights of our children, of our mm. future generations? Mm. Let's stop going into these huge stories. Two things, education, health, no, three, and food. Surely. Uh, and, and, sort and out those said, three. If you sort out those basic ones, all these other things that you're scrambling to do, We'll find the way they just kind of fall in place. Feed your people. Make sure that they're healthy and that they can be educated. Ah, You're halfway done. Ah, there's a story on page four of the standard today. Pain of mothers whose children died in strange circumstances. So it talks about a group called Team Compassion, which is of mothers who've lost their children. For example, this one is... The story of um, a woman called Annie Jaroge, who's been living in the UK for more than 20 years. Ms. Jaroge has just come back into the country with a suitcase containing the ashes of her 26-year-old son, Gabriel Karaoke. Her son, who was a quantity surveyor, went missing on the 18th of May last year while living in the UK, northeast of England. He was found dead along a beach on the 25th, five weeks later. So she says she was with him on the 17th and then he went missing the following day. I reported the incident to the police and they started a search, finding him along the seafront. In a tearful narration, Ms. Njeroge described her son as one who's posit- who was positive about life and was charitable. He was a gentleman, a personal friend, an exercise coach and a business advisor. The woman lost her child just like that. She tried to find out what exactly happened. An inquest was opened and the police told her, uh, you know what, your son killed himself. He drowned. He had a five millimeter hole in the forehead. That means a shot to the forehead. So it's not clear who shot him. Mm. She's trying to deal with that. She's trying to deal with all those things. She goes into depression. Now, 
similar women who have lost children in a similar way. For example, Lucy Wanjiro. Lucy Wanjiro was the mother of two Kitengela boys, Frederick Muraidi and Victor Mwangi. Mm. Remember them? Mm. Who mm. were murdered mm. in August last year. Mm. She says she has gone into some serious depression. Um, she, the loss of her children affected her economically and psychologically, revealing that she spends most of her days locked up in the house crying. I cannot go back to the UK because I don't have any more children to work for. I had taken a 3.5 million shilling bank loan and I had to sell my vehicles and some property to clear the debt. Now I have nothing. These were her only two children. They've died at the same time, buried at the same time. Now she's like, what am I going to do? What? So she's just here. Um, she and others now have come together and they've found this team compassion where it's a support group for such mothers who are going through a lot, a lot. Oh. And you can see many of them are also single mothers. Mm. You're That's looking okay. for support and you need that support. Crazy. Yeah, it's a sad one. I left my husband after I almost died of beatings, according to an athlete of abusive marriage. Mm -hmm. During a relationship spanning more than th uh, 12 years, Deborah, <laughs> whose real name has been withheld, obviously for security reasons, um, had endured beatings from her husband. But in 2019, he nearly killed her. The marathoner, who has done more than 20 races, was rescued and taken to hospital. The brutal attack was a wake-up call for her. In December 2019, once healed, she went to her parents and vowed never to return to her matrimonial home. She lost all her investment and her lover turned tormentor wanted her dead. To date, Deborah, not her real name again, lives in fear. She fears the man could come for her and kill her. So this is an athlete who runs for Kenya as we speak. So this is giving rise to the number of deaths that we've seen amongst this fraternity over the last few years. I wanted to have a good family and with the hard work in training, I knew I would perform well and make sure I took good care of my family. But that was not to be because I was beaten every time and things became worse and what i used to earn through racing was being misused the talented athlete started her running career while in school due to lack of school fees and decided to venture into athletics full-time she started running at track events and with time graduated to road races and marathon competitions it was a good move she says because she won various races in europe the earnings were good and in 2007 she fell in love the couple started living together and had two children Trouble started when she became pregnant with her first baby. She thought the constant fights were normal for families uh, who had to... And she, th she said she just had to persevere and hopefully that they would come to an end. After two years, she got pregnant again. And after her second child, things moved from bad to worse. And she often fled to her parents' home. Infidelity and misuse of money were the major problems. And when she asked her husband about it, she would be beaten. Every time she ran away, her parents would talk to her in-laws and they would settle things. And then she would be told back to go back to her matrimonial home. One time, just before the COVID-19 pandemic hit, her husband went out and when he came in the evening, he beat her. She ran and spent the night in a maize plantation because it was too late to seek shelter elsewhere. When she returned home, her husband locked the doors to stop her from escaping. Then he beat her to within an inch of her life. She thought she was dying. Her relatives got wind of what had happened and rushed her to hospital where she stayed for three months. When she was discharged from hospital, she went home to her parents and vowed never to go back to her abusive husband. She left everything in her home, including her trophies and medals she won and started life afresh. She's happy she moved out uh, before she was killed, but she still lives in fear that should she come out, this man will find her and finish the job that she has started. She said... We have various athletes going through the same tough times and it is high time they moved out of those relationships fast or they could talk to concerned people. We don't want to see or lose any more athletes like Agnes Tirop and Damaris Mothe who died in a painful manner. So, How is it that this guy is just walking around free? Uh, this is the thing I need to understand. Mm. Was this matter reported? Yes. The matter was reported but uh, nothing has been done about it yet. Um, she said, yeah, nothing has been done about it yet, she said. She says, we've realized there is a big problem in terms of gender-based violence, which affects everyone. But for some reason, with athletes who have made it, mm. it turns out to be even worse. 
Don't you and get the impression that she is fear. the one who was earning for this family? No, she of is. Course. She is. She is the one who was earning. And that's one of the issues. You get some there sense was misuse of, of money. Yes. And yeah. and you can imagine so this you the athletes in Kenya start really early at a very young age. So you're growing up into this being um trained and coached and being modeled to run from junior races mm -hmm. you go and win and you start making money so all along you are just a tool you get out there you run okay i'm managing everything else so there's already a power imbalance in that relationship from yeah. the get-go mm -hmm. from the get-go i'm gonna get you into the races i'm gonna get you into the manager i'm gonna there's a, that power imbalance when that conference took place in Diani. Remember the conference that took place and it was discussing yeah. the plight of uh, female athletes, athletes in Kenya. Yeah. And uh, the number of big shot people who attended that, that conference, including the cabinet secretary, uh, Amina, I think they need to just follow it up mm. properly and see how do you give this support? Mm. How do you give some proper structured support to all athletes? Mm. And the problem with these matters is when you report them to the police, mm. and as far as they're concerned, it's a domestic issue. Yeah, yeah. They tell you, no, no, this one. This one we can't get. Can it. you deal? Can you sort it yes. out before Palakia we go? Yeah. Yes. Find out sort it. And these things, the moment there's money involved, the dynamics in the discussion changes completely. Mm. On the one hand, you'll find parents who feel that mm. if their, their daughter leaves the husband, it's an embarrassment to them. On the other hand, there are those who actually think, well, she wasn't really that injured. For heaven's sake. Mm. <laughs> two ended up dead in the span of one year. Two athletes who were mishandled in the same manner ended up dead. Until now, one of them has a foundation in her, in her honor to help provide care and support mm. for others who may be going through the same thing. Why do we get a situation is. where we are discussing a norm, as though it's a normal thing for people to be violent in relationships and for people... Uh, how? How? Imagine the kind of injuries that were inflicted on this woman that she had to be in hospital for three months. You are death's door. Absolutely. Now, imagine how many more are in such a situation but do not come out and seek for help or support, are not even able to open their mouths and speak about the horrors that they go through on a daily basis. And then you become the successful one. You are the successful one. You're traversing the world. Everybody knows who you are. You're being celebrated the world over. But then you're going to come and pay homage to this person at home. And he will deal, or in some cases, she will deal with you in the way in which they feel, f they, they deem fit. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes you sad. end up in a box. It's sad. Let's end on a positive note, though. And the standard has done a very good job. Two pages. Behold, Kenya's golden stars. We're talking about the just concluded Deaf Olympics in Brazil where Kenya came home with 24 medals and they've put in the names and the uh, mugshots of all of these Kenyans who went to Brazil and they came back with medals. Kenya's Anne Wangeshi celebrates after winning bronze medal in the women's triple chase at the 24th Summer Deaf Olympics in Brazil. We are talking about many. We had 800 meters silver, 1500 meters silver, bronze in 4 by, uh, four by 400 meters relay. Uh, very, very many uh, athletes here. Uh, team, Ke team Kenya captain was called Lucas Wanjiru Wandia. He came home with gold in the men's 3,000 meters tipo chase. That was the, he was defending his title. Yeah. Uh, Lynette Fomba Nanjala, silver mixed 4x400, silver, women's 4x400 relay, bronze, women's 4x400, bronze, women's 4x400 relay. Sheesh. You know, Kenyan athletes were just basically going there and doing the business. Doing the business. And they come back home, we need to celebrate them. Absolutely. Kenya's golden stars. It's a good thing. Keep it here for more conversations. Plus, we'll also be telling you about the Kenya Revenue Authority. There's an alternative dispute resolution mechanism that's being managed by KRA. It is fast, it is confidential, and it helps you resolve your issues without necessarily having to go through the rigors and the headache of going through a long court process. Mm -hmm. And KRA are saying, guys... Let's actually look at ADR as a way of resolving tax disputes. Good morning. It's 7 a.m. Spice up your life. 
the latest news from around the world. 94.4 Spice FM. Good morning, this is Newsline Dennis Fonseto. The IEBC will today begin assessing presidential candidates if they have met the legal requirements for official approval. In the process that begins today and ends on Thursday, candidates are expected to submit a list of 2,000 voters from at least 24 counties out of the 47. The names are expected to be accompanied by signatures as well as a copy of the ID. The IEBC has also instructed candidates to ensure that their academic credentials are approved by the Commission of Higher Education if they studied abroad. Last week, IEBC Chairperson of Chibukati announced that from today he will meet with all the presidential candidates, all their representatives at Bombers of Kenya to explain some of the legal requirements before the official approval, which will be issued between May 9th, 20, May 29th rather, and June 10th. Now, Azmi Alaw Moja, one Kenya coalition party leader, Raila Odinga, has promised to improve the livelihoods of Kenyans within the first 100 days of his tenure. Raila, who took his presidential campaigns to Naro County, accompanied by his running mate, Martha Karua, said his administration will focus on universal health care, social protection programs, and eradicating corruption. Raila and Karua have, in the last couple of days, held a series of campaigns in Naro County in a bid to woo voters as we approach the general election. And Deputy President William Ruta says fostering unity and enhancing the economy remains the core agenda that is in line with his bottom-up economic model. Speaking while leading the Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade in a vote-hunting mission in the Rift Valley, the AP urged the electorate not to be lured into supporting their opponent, saying his track record in the region puts him ahead, while boasting that Kenya Kwanzaa commands popularity in the central region. The leaders told the electorate against shifting their political preference. Jimmy Wanjigi and his running mate Willis Otuna have told residents in Siai County that they are aiming at forming an all-inclusive government focusing on the youth should they win the polls slated for August 9th. Wanjigi and Otuna were speaking in Nia during a chart service retreat at that campaign pillar of economic growth, telling the congregants that it was time for young people to take charge of the country's top leadership. Wanjigi also promised the residents of Siaya that he will revive the economy and create employment for the young people in Kenya who remain jobless despite several promises by the government. And the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance presidential running mate regarding the Kashagwe and Mombasa governorship hopeful Mike Sonko are among the leaders the National Integrity Alliance has red carded from contesting in the August polls. The leaders were announced as part of this year's NIA red card campaign which aims to bind individuals with questionable integrity from being elected into public office in the general election. Regarding and Sonko joined Kirinyaga Governor Anwar Iguru, Malindi MP Aisha Jumwa and Makasi East MP Babu Wino, former Nairobi Governor Governor Evan Skidero, as well as Capsaret MP Oscar Sudi, who have all been flagged. NIA said the Red Cat 2022 list was generated from authentic and trusted investigative reports. And President Uhuru Kenyatta has urged the World Health Organization to expedite pre qualification of locally produced health products to ensure market access. Addressing the 25th World Health Assembly in Geneva, Switzerland. President Kenyatta said that the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic exposed the overdependence of developing countries to external markets, which he noted hampered efforts to speed up vaccine production and supply. The head of state emphasized the need for collaboration among all stakeholders across the globe to address the existing gaps. And Mombasa County Commissioner John Otieno has put parents in Likoni on notice over claims that they have been protecting and hiding their children who are members of armed juvenile gangs. The CC said that in any case where a parent is found hiding a juvenile gangster, they will also be arrested and punished as accomplices of criminal activities. Otieno, who was speaking during a community baraza in Timbwani area in Likoni Sub County, said that he is saddened by the escalating cases of machete armed gangs of youth, some as young as 12, where they attack residents. For the broad end, President Joe Biden arrived in Japan for the second leg of an Asian trip underlining U.S. commitment to the region, but overshadowed by concern that North Korea will test a nuclear weapon after ignoring Washington's attempt at outreach. Biden, making his first trip to Asia as president, flew from South Korea into Yokota Air Base outside Tokyo, where he will meet with Japan's Prime Minister Fumio Kishida and Emperor today, as well as unveiling a U.S.-led multilateral trade initiative. 
Tomorrow, he reinforces the theme of American leadership in the Asia-Pacific by joining the leaders of Australia, India and Japan for a summit of the Quad Group. This is Newswire, Dennis Aceto. Good morning. Spice FM, Nakuru. Building up on Uhuru Highway this morning, getting into the cities where we'll see most of the traffic today. We'll have some in and outbound, interestingly enough, outbound traffic on uh, Uhuru Highway. Let's look at Ngong Road coming out into the city, taking off a little bit from Rilo Dinga Way, but nothing too crazy in that direction. Jogo Road in and outbound is doing the thing. Landis Road, not too bad right now. At the Kamkunji roundabout is where you'll see some action. Folks trying to connect with Outer Ring, which is not too much of an issue right now, but the thicker superhighway is giving it off hot today. Inbound traffic is quite the thing and we're seeing this going well past the outer ring junction out in that direction into thicker uh, moving really slowly also on Limuru Road today in and outbound traffic and we'll see it continuing on Kiambu Road as well uh, that's already doing the thing really early this morning uh, let's keep an eye on things as we uh, go along Muthaiga looks like it's going to give off some traffic in both directions, coming out the Westlands end and also coming out on the thicker superhighway. Langata Road started early and it's still giving off that traffic today. Mobasa Road not looking bad either today. Let's talk on Spice of MKE on Twitter. Let's see what happens in half an hour or so. Let us know where you might be stuck or where you find a good route and let's keep Monday morning moving. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up not down. Eight minutes after seven. This Good morning and how are you doing? Room. Welcome to the second hour of Kenya's biggest conversation. This happy Monday, it's the 23rd day of March 2022. We continue with our misery in the first quarter of the year until things happen. And this is power bills come down by 15%. Uh, what else was supposed to happen? Mm, the expressway. The, expressway. the road is no, supposed to be open. No, the president open. was supposed to drive. Mm. Mm. All the way from uh, Machakos Junction to Rironi, mm -hmm. and then launch the Rironi to Mao Summit <coughs> section of the road. Yes. All these things are supposed to happen in March. In March, and as they haven't happened, so, so we still remain in March. We're still in March. Mm. We still yes. we stay there until until things happen. We have a guest in the studio today. We'll be having conversations about uh, the running mates. So we have a first one in the studio. But before we introduce him, CT has the day's proverb. Uganda from, still, right? Yes, it is. Last, yeah. The last proverb from Uganda. Yeah. Yeah. Do not belittle what you did not cultivate. Do not belittle what you did not cultivate. Yes. Mm. 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 <laughs> if it's yours, you have the right. Yeah, in a man of speaking, you do. Mm. But if Essentially, you what you're being told is... Mm. Don't be too opinionated on something that you do not have all the details about. Yeah? Yes. It's a Pilipili Uzioila kind. Yes, it's Uzioila and Shambani and all that. Pilipili Uzioila. Yakua Shia Nini. What? If you, eh? if you, di if you didn't eat it, why do you take Panado for the dinner headache? <laughs> say it. <laughs> <laughs> say, say that that problem. Oh, yeah. why you won't take Panadol for another person headache? That's, that's the that's one. one. That's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the one. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Same, same. Same, same. Same, same. Okay. Willie Sotieno is an advocate. He is uh, the running mate for Jimmy Wanjege in the presidential campaign. 
as Safina. That's the pair. And he's in the studio with us, Willis. Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. How are you? Good. Mm. Good to have you in the situation room. Thank you very much. Uh, Glad that, to be with Oko and Sidi. Mm. That, that is the hot seat. Yes. Yeah. When uh, Jimmy was here, he was wearing a jacket that was uh, written. What was it written? Spice. What was it? Wait, 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 wait. There was something. There was something. It will come. Mm. It will come. It will come. We'll, look, come. At, we'll yeah. look at the photos. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, so you, 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 you're not wearing that jacket. You, you, <laughs> you didn't get the brief. Agent, fearless. <laughs> <laughs> fearless. Fearless is a spirit. Yeah. It's in me. It's in you. Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> so we just heard from the news here that you were in CIA yesterday. Yes. Uh, campaigning. Take, you took your campaign to CIA. Uh, I went to my home village for mm. prayers, mm -hmm. uh, unveiling prayers. Then uh, after that, we did a small rally which we thought was small, but the people came in huge numbers. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Homa Bay. I also did a very big rally at the Yugi's bus park. Mm -hmm. And the reception was electric. So in one day, we managed to cover two counties in Sierra, mm -hmm. in Nyanza, that is Sierra County, and Homa Bay County. When you say electric, <coughs> big rally, what do you mean? What do you I mean, use to, to the, measure that? The numbers were, even if you look at the pictures, the people cultivate, allow us to live, like in Noma Bay in particular. Mm. The, we were having a fight with the pilot that it's time to leave, but the people are like, no, 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 you want to hear some more. There's still two more places to go to. Mm. Mm. And they were just thirst by the people to listen to our message. Mm. And that was very encouraging. Mm. Being my debut in the region mm. as a political player. <laughs> it's your first time in politics? It's my first time in uh, frontal politics. Right. In 2017, I was Raila Odinga's campaign manager. Mm -hmm. I was also his lawyer. And we did then, I was then secretary of the NASA summit, so to speak. Mm. So I've played a role in politics, but has been more providing the technical support in the background. But now it's my first time to put myself foot forward mm. to play a front role. Why did you have the, why was there the need to go home and pray to you open know, all of this? You know, where I come from, they say everything starts with prayer. Mm. And uh, even the sermon that the vicar gave us yesterday was that you first pray, then you plan, then plan, then you pray. Mm. So you found it very <laughs> in sync that I chose to go home to pray. Then we come back to plan, then we go back and pray. Mm. And we go implement the plans. Mm -hmm. So we feel, I feel that uh, a journey like this is a journey of faith. And uh, you must be spiritually in, in sync with your maker. Mm -hmm. And uh, you must also get the blessings. My parents are in the, in the village. And I will not, I think it will have been a disservice to bring them all the way to Nairobi to pray with me. It's easier for me to go to the village and pray with them. Mm -hmm. Yes, because of the conveniences and the challenges of transporting old people to the city and then trans in essentially just moving them away from their what they've perceived as their comfort zone mm. yes mm -hmm. mm. okay so what's the plan what's now that you have prayed yes what's the plan uh the first the next step now is for us to get the iebc clearance today we're having a a candidate's briefing uh with the commission then from 28th to 28th of May to 6th of June, there will be the formal nomination of candidates. Mm. After that, we will now hit the ground running. Mm. And I can tell you, we know the formula of winning this election. Mm. This election will go to a runoff, and our campaign will be in that runoff, and we will win in that second round of the elections. You seem cocksure of this. 100%. Mm. 100%. We've done the math. We have uh, analyzed the voters. We've, and if you just do a scratch of the history of our country mm. and how people vote, it answers that question. Mm -hmm. That this is not a first one, of one round election. We have never had a runoff. Because <coughs> you will notice that in previous elections, the formation of the political formations were more towards uh, a first round win. But then mm. still, You'll note that in 2013, 2017, last election, 
if we were to go by what the Supreme Court held in overturning Uru Kenyatta's declared victory, that was a runoff election. And even us as NASA, we knew this election was going to a runoff based on our own projections, based on our own polls. And our main plan was that once you go to a runoff with an incumbent president, you are the team with the momentum. The rest of the country will rally behind you mm. and you will win it in the runoff. But of course, they manipulated the results and the Supreme, <laughs> Court, vindicate, the Supreme Court vindicated it. The 1.4 million margin of victory mm. that the IBC used to declare Uru Kenyatta, that was pure hogwash. That those votes didn't exist. In 2013, same arguments were given, you know. Of, of course. In the run-up to the election, this is going to be a runoff. Look at the number of candidates. Look at the strength of the candidates. I mean, we had, we had Raila, we had Uhuru, we had uh, uh, Mudavadi. Mudavadi. We had Peter Kenneth, we had Martha Karua, we had Paul Muite. But, but you know, heavyweights in politics. If, if you know. And it was clear that they were going to, you know, take away some votes from the main candidates, that is Uhuru and and. and you know, that, that, that can be partly true, but look at even 20, that 2013 elections. If you analyze it deeply, you will note that Mdavadi took some votes from Raila. Mm -hmm. There was the issue of the spoiled votes, uh, which were pinging, pinging very high. Mm. In, and the, 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 the jury is still out there. In the one number three. If, if indeed, <laughs> if indeed uh, the 50% plus one was actually met because you'll note that the 900 page affidavit mm. which God sought to file out of time in court mm. had a lot of details on how the 50% plus one was never achieved. Mm. But we may never get to know because now the, 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 the legal process of question that election has, uh, has lapsed. Mm. But let me just tell you this also. You know, there's a huge percentage of undecided voters here. Almost 30 something percent of undecided voters. Mm. If you go to the mountain region for in particular, there, there have been four years of sustained campaigns by the two camps of Raila and Ruto. Mm. But a majority of the voters in that region are yet to decide who they are going to support. Mm -hmm. So they are looking for an alternative platform. They are looking for a new campaign that speaks their issues. Mm -hmm. And we do believe that all those undecided voters in this election, once we get a platform to share what our policy is, what our manifesto is, mm. they will swing to our side. And if you get those undecided voters, that is what takes us to the runoff election. Because in our projection, we'll get approximately between 35 to 41 percent of the votes mm. in the first round. Okay. I mean, uh, the, the numbers are interesting. I'm sure there could be b many, many arguments uh, on those. Um, the conversation that is taking place popularly among circles right now is um, the choice of running mate for whomever it be at whatever level. And that the choice of running mate could essentially break or make uh, somebody's campaign and then further to that position. Um, do you think, or let's, let me ask it this way, how far do you think the influence of a running mate then on a candidate's position uh, goes in terms of the decision by the voter? I do, I do believe it plays a very big role. And if you look at the American electoral political experience, mm. uh, running mates <coughs> play a key role in giving a campaign a bump mm. or a dump. In, uh, if you take the, the three candidates in this election, main candidates in this election, mm. uh, the choice of Regarding Ashagwa, in a way, has given William Ruto a dump. Mm. The choice of uh, Martha Karoa has given Raila Odinga a slight bump, mm -hmm. got some momentum. The choice of Willis Otieno by Jimmy Wanjigi has given Jimmy Wanjigi a bump mm -hmm. to the extent that... <laughs> I wouldn't expect you to say it was slight or dump. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Oh, no. No, no, I mean... Go on. Yeah. No, no, you see, because <laughs> if you look at it, the kind of... Now we can easily go and campaign in... Uh, in Kisumu, and uh, the youth are seeing their face. For the first time, you're talking about a serious candidate having uh, somebody who's less than 40 years old in the campaign on, on the ticket, presidential mm. ticket. I mean, a potential president, so to speak. Mm. Because you had, your choice of deputy must address the question of this is a person who potentially should also be presidential. Mm. She will have the ideas that are necessary to transform this country. Mm. And now we are giving uh, an awakening 
And that is going to be my pitch on the trail. Mm. We are giving an, a reawakening to the, our young people that uh, it is not our fault to constantly play second fiddle. We can actually be admitted to the table. Now, now we are the table. Mm. And uh, that is a, a huge constituency of undecided voters. I'm mm. sure even if you ask in the newsroom today, uh, your colleagues, many of them will tell you they are undecided. Mm. And any undecided voter will always want to look at the new kid on the block. And we are the new kid on the block in this particular election. Let me ask you this question. Yes. You mm. are clearly a strategist and you've been involved in politics. Eh? Mm. The three questions I want to ask you, so I'm beginning with the, the first one. Yes. Do you honestly think mm. that we actually have undecided voters in this country? Yes. I 100% believe that there are some voters who have refused to choose make a decision in relation to Raila Odinga and William Ruto. And those are voters who are looking for the viable third option. Mm. And we are that the viable third option. So that's why I say, whoever may be an undecided voter, they'll easily find home in the Jimmy Willis campaign. So as far as you're concerned, mm. if voters are undecided, it means what they see on offer doesn't please them. And they would like a different option. Yes, because to, a, to an extent that if you look at even the way the, the media narrative and uh, the posturing has been that mm. we are only selling these two products. If those two products were both palatable, you would not be having this number of undecided voters even as per opinion polls. Mm. In fact, if they were each, either of them was palatable, this election would have been decided by now. Mm. But to the extent that it's not decided, I was just looking at the newspaper today. Even IBC is planning for Iran. Okay. Now, my second question. Mm. Your traditional home is in Luanyanza. Yes. And there's already a gentleman who is vying for the presidency, and he also comes from Luanyanza. Yes. His home isn't too far away from yours. Yes. Now, how will the optics of your candidature appear? Because the way I understand politics in that region, because I come from there, mm. If you are not supporting the candidature of Raila, it will be seemed like you are in opposition to his mm. candidature. Mm. How well do you think this will augur with the votes that you are likely to get? You know, you know let me put it this way. In fact, it's interesting you asked that question. Yesterday when I came back from Oma Bay mm. and landed at Wilson Airport, mm. who do I meet the first at the VIP lounge? It's mm. Raila Odinga himself. And we were comparing notes. So he's telling me how Narok was, mm. asking me how CI and Oma Bay were. You are laughing about this time we are in a win win the region is in a win win situation. If he wins the presidency, the region has won. If I win the deputy, the region has won. As opposed to just having one 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 person <laughs> and controlling the community. Okay. So so I mean if from him to recognize the form the formidableness of our campaign and see it as a if if you to look at it from the regional prism as a win. Either way, that's a positive. Uh, even when I listen to people in CIA and even in Oma Bay, people want to hear, listen to ideas. They've, they want a campaign that speaks to their core. And right now, the core issue that people are concerned about is the economy. Mm. Uh, I mean, you'll be talking and just looking at the eyes of the people as you talk to them. You are seeing almost economic despair. People who are hungry. Uh, young people who have, uh, I mean, by the time I was leaving home, I had almost 10 CVs of graduates. Mm. Some just telling me all I want, maybe. Even if you can just make me a driver in your campaign mm. and be your bodyguard. And I'm like, but you're a graduate. You're a graduate teacher. Why should you be a bodyguard to a politician? Mm. That's not your qualification. You have a skill set that this country needs to exploit. And if we can't do it locally, we must have an, an expansionist program as a country that we can even uh, have you provide labor in the region. Because you're a trained teacher. I mean, we can't train somebody for four, four years in the university, 12 years before university. Then you reduce him to become a bodyguard for a politician. Mm. That is wrong. And I'm not saying it's wrong to be a bodyguard. Mm. If you train to be a bodyguard, to provide protection, that's okay. But if you train to be a teacher, you are mentor. You are meant to go out and train other, the next generation of our country. 
Third question. Third question. <laughs> uh, this view that uh, uh, you say Raila expressed to you, mm. Raila Odinga being a seasoned politician yes. who actually has a very broad and view of life and someone whom you've worked with. Yes. Do you think his supporters share his view? Uh, to the extent, uh, if, if, if I look at the rhetoric in uh, Oyugis, they share that view. In fact, in law they were saying, Wangni <laughs> Ongelal. Uh, in law, meaning yeah. this time there is no loss. <laughs> it's a win win. <laughs> and, and it was interesting that I had it in Oyugis, yeah. then uh, right in Nairobi, and I hear the same thing. So, if, and you've seen, uh, CD, you've seen when previously, uh, people have taken it a hostile approach to opposition to Raila's candidacy. It's never been, uh, I mean, it's been vocal. Laws are not known to be quiet people. Mm -hmm. When they don't want you, they don't want you, and they'll communicate it. But when they want to hear your ideas, and that is what we are selling to them, mm -hmm. that we have ideas and we are a campaign that can transform this country. Mm -hmm. So they are willing to listen to us. They're open to your ideas. They're open to ideas. So they don't view uh, Wanjigi Willis ticket as an opposition to Raila. They view it as they don't view it in a, ho in a hostile way. Do they, they view, view you it as an alternative to Raila? Uh -huh. As an alternative, so Do that if either of us won, mm. if Raila wins, they're okay with it. If we win, we're okay with it. So that we will. I'll say we have supporters and sympathizers both for Raila. And for our campaign. Do you think, Willis, that this is reflective of some other conversation that we've had um, where people think that the Jimmy Wenjigi ticket is Raila's proxy? No, no, no. It's not. It's not so proxy. maybe even the supporters of Raila on the ground are just looking at it. We are not losing no, no, no. anything. No, <laughs> this no, is our guy. No, anyway. no, 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 no. We are, <laughs> we are competitors. Mm. We are ardent competitors of each other. Mm. And uh, if we were proxies, I mean, everybody who said it was Raila's proxy has uh, folded and gone back to support him. Mm. We are going to be end up to the 9th of August. Mm. And uh, you see, it just but happens you, that we share, we share. One thing that we must agree yeah. is that in terms of ideological underpinnings, mm. we all, we both share the deep social democracy platform. Mm. That's what even, that's why we're in ODM. I mean, ideologically, we are more aligned to Raila. Mm. If you were to look at our history, you had to look at our politics, we were even playing together the last election. But for this particular election, we believe we are the best campaign to address the questions of the election, which mm. is the economic question. Mm. Raila is the champion of uh, political rights. He has played that role. He has anchored it safely in our 2010 constitution. Mm -hmm. Where we now need to move this country is how to liberate our people economically, how to transform the economic condition of our people. And we believe that the Jim Willie ticket is that ticket. It's offering that. Yes. You're saying there are very many undecided voters, even to date, yes. who have had all the people who are you know, seeking the presidency and they've thought, no, we want an alternative. Mm. When you went to uh, CIA and Homer Bay mm. this weekend, were people aware of Jimmy or were they hearing of the Jimmy Willis ticket for the first people time? People are aware of Jimmy. People know about Jimmy Wanjigi. Mm. He's a brand, so to speak. Mm. And that's why I'm telling you that... If so you Jimmy has, is, is well known. The fact well that known. Jimmy is vying for the <coughs> presidency is well known. Jimmy as a brand is well known. Uh -huh. uh, what is not well known, mm. I mean, in terms of uh, people understanding is his economic policies, his ideas to transform the economy. Mm. And you could, because, it, I mean, we also have to blame the media to an extent that <laughs> you've actually muffled our voices. You've refused to give us the same platform that you give and coverage that you give to Raila and Ruto. Mm. But at least Spice, Spice FM, has, I'm not talking about the media, <laughs> Spice FM. I'm talking about the other media. I mean, to, to have me here, uh, it will be an oxymoron for me to say, you know, that yet you've given me a platform now to use. Let me tell but you I'm talking oxymoron. about the news coverage. People on the ground, <laughs> yes. in CIA, mm. in Homer Bay, mm. in what other parts of the country have you been to? Uh, they are aware that Jimmy Wenjeke is a candidate in the forthcoming presidential yes, election. Yes, that's true. That means that they mm. have received, that you have received sufficient media coverage to create that awareness. No, 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 no. L let me put it this way. You know, if you say sufficient, even if you are to look at, let's look at even Friday news. Mm. If you just look at Friday, look at uh, KTN news at nine, NTV news at nine, Citizen news at nine. 
of all the three KTN will be doing a bit better mm. followed by NTV citizen dismally i mean almost zero coverage let me not put it that way and we are not complaining i mean it's their democratic choice you get your, if well, that's what me, they've decided let, let me get that my question <laughs> okay my question mm. is with the with regards to this undecided that you've talked about yes now people have heard Raila, they are undecided they have mm. heard ruto they are undecided mm. they have heard jimmy no no they, they are, are now they are now hearing jimmy i mean if you look at it even on spice here where i am today mm. this is the second time you're hosting somebody from the jimmy campaign after hosting himself now it's me mm. if you were to count how many people from the raila campaign or the ruto campaigns have been hosted on this show where it, did it, jimmy it, it is, enter this race so that's the point that i'm saying last that year, in terms it? last yes. year mm. last year, it, that i'm saying in terms in terms of people hearing our voice you cannot say eric that they've heard us mm. they've heard our competition more than they've heard us because our competition have hogged the media space for almost three year, four years now running mm. right we've only been there and cd right to say that when did you start okay fine we started last year we are trying to occupy the same space uh, within a very short time of period and what we are saying that if we had had as many people hearing what our issues are mm. as they have had mm. our competition this race will be decided today kenyans will say that the jimmy ticket is a ticket that will liberate this country because one thing that seems to be clear i don't think anybody doubts this now that the question of this election is now about the economy. Mm. It was framed like that for quite a while. Let's take a break. It's half past seven. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Willi Sutieno is a running mate to Jimmy Wenjege and the Safina presidential ticket. And he's here with us talking to us about, you know, the value of the running mates, the air campaign. And also we'll talk about a case that he is among the lawyers who prosecuted it in court. It's called a minor care judgment on election transmission and declaration of winners for the presidential election. We'll be discussing that shortly at 28 minutes to 8. The Kenya Revenue Authority wants you to know that there is now an alternative dispute resolution mechanism. It's not, it's not a new one. It's been there. But they want you to know that it's actually one that works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, you have the issues every now and then, right? KRA says you owe a certain amount and you've not talked to us in a certain number of months rather than for us come knock on your door and be dealt with these punitive um, methods, how about you come and have a chat with us and we can figure this out, you know. Uh, tell us what exactly the issue is and we can see how we can sort it out. Uh, basically saying we're lending uh, an opportunity for you to be heard. So you don't need to be afraid anymore. Um, alternate dispute resolution now is a method that the Kenya Revenue Authority is adopting and it's encouraging everybody to come forward and sort it out. Indeed. We'll be telling you more about it in the coming days to let you know how you can also take advantage of ADR, the um, route that you can take to go to take your issues and disputes to the alternative dispute resolution. Let's take this quick break. Tell us how the roads are looking like. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul, and nostalgic ballads. Make some noise. Yeah. You're listening to Spice FM. At KTN Home, we are all about the action. So you can enjoy unstoppable, unbeatable, unrivaled, unmatched movies from Hollywood. Get your popcorn ready. Tune in to KTN Home and buckle up to experience a new world of entertainment from the comfort of your living room. Tune in to KTN Home every Monday to Thursday plus Sundays and catch Hollywood's finest movies from 10 p.m. for the time of your life. Cloudy conditions in Nairobi at 17, highs of 27 today. We'll see highs of 26 in Nakuru. It's mostly clear at 16. 
Sunny conditions at 16 in Nyeri, highs of 26 and lows of 13. And it's cloudy at 15 in Eldoret with highs of 24 and lows of 13. Partly cloudy conditions through Mombasa at 25, highs of 31, lows of 24. And we'll see the sun come out in Malindi to highs of 31 today and lows of 25. It's mostly cloudy at 21 in Kisumu, highs of 27 and lows of 20. While Kakamega is cloudy at 20, it'll go to highs of 27 and lows of 15. Uh, out in Kampala, the rain continues at 21 highs of 27 and lows of 18 while the sun is up in Dar es Salaam at 22 we'll see highs of 32 today a chilly morning in Johannesburg at 5 degrees still we'll see highs of 17 lows of 5 and Lagos is clear at 24 with highs of 31 21 are mostly cloudy in Kinshasa highs of 29 and lows of 20 Spice up your life. All right, traffic continues in most parts of the city. Getting into traffic hour this Monday and looking at what it has in store on most of these Nairobi streets. Coming off of the thicker superhighway, uh, really thick. And uh, all the way then from the outer ring junction out through to the Pangani underpass is what we're looking at this morning. Coming off Kiambu Road, you're going to get to that Muthaiga Square and you'll be stopped right there at that Pangani underpass as well. Still continues hot and heavy. We're looking at Kiambu, Kiambu Road, which traffic now has gone well past Coffee Garden. So that doesn't look pretty at all. Uh, we're also looking at Limu Road. In and outbound traffic continues. Juja Road is really busy. Looking into um, that part of the city, then coming out towards Pangani. Moranga Road doing its thing to Kirinyaga, Kijabe Street, that whole area, absolute mess. The CBD is really, really full this morning. Ring Road Westlands also quite busy. Looking at uh, Waiaki Way, use the Red Hill Link Road. There's an option to get you out of that traffic this morning. So those are options for you today. Mombasa Road looks pretty good. Let's talk Spice of MKE on Twitter. Text 40127. up your life. Conversation continues at 23 minutes to 8 with Eric Latif, C.T. Muga Nduoko and Willy Sotieno who is the running mate for Jimmy Wenjege in the Safina presidential ticket. And we're talking about very many things including the, the Jimmy Wenjege campaign and also the preparation for this year's general election. So Willis, you're among the lawyers who were in court in this particular case, which was filed by Maina Kiai, Khalif Khalifa, Tirob Kitur, um, and others. And this was with regards to transmission of election results in, um, in Kenya. Yeah. What was the matter that you took to court? The main issue in that case mm -hmm. was that in 2013, you will note that uh, at some point when the IBC was transmitting the election results, that system in a way collapsed. Mm -hmm. And uh, when they came, when the system came back, it was just a rush to tell us what the results are. And the media <laughs> had been bad from capturing the results as was being announced at the constituency telling centers. Yeah. So we went to the constitution to just now read properly. Mm -hmm. What is it that we, why should I vote in my local primary school and yet somebody at Bomas has a final say? So we went and looked at the constitution. Mm. And the wording of the constitution, Article 138 in particular, mm. on presidential elections, it says that when a presidential election is to be held, it shall be held in each constituency. So our presidential elections are not national in nature. Mm. They are constituency-based as per that article. Mm -hmm. uh, such that once a returning officer for a respective constituency has conducted his presidential elections at the polling stations, they vote, they tally in the Form 34As, they bring to the constituency, that constituency's process is complete mm. and our case, why we went to court was that we wanted now the media to be free mm. at that point to start making a formal 
announcement of what that constituency has voted. Mm -hmm. And let everybody in their own home use a calculator or use a pen and paper and say for constituency A or stones or whatever. Whatever, yes. yes. For constituency A, yeah. these are the returns as announced by the returning officer for that constituency. You can do your own math. Mm -hmm. Then, once you get to <coughs> um, a super majority, even if others are not called, mm. you're able to tell that these are the results coming from all the constituent standing officers. Mm -hmm. This is the person who has won the elections. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, what we really wanted was we wanted to get the media to, to proactively go to the 290 constituencies, mm. capture and relay announcements as done by the constituency returning officers. Mm -hmm. But you see what IBC does say is that, no, 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 those are provisional. <laughs> those are provisional results. Wait for us to give you the final results at Bomas. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are not even recognized as, you know, IBC, if you are to be legally speaking, mm -hmm. IBC at Bomas, those are clerical officers for the constituency returning officers. They are not election officers. They are not statutory election officers at Bomas. The election is done at the constituency, that is where you have a statutory officer conducting the elections. Mm -hmm. The chairman has only one role, mm -hmm. to fill the declaration form, finally, a clerical role again. That is why you see normally what the chairman of the IBC does. He cleverly, <laughs> he cleverly declares himself the returning officer for presidential elections. Mm. <laughs> but there cannot be a returning officer for presidential elections. Is there it's an any, oxymoron. Is there any part of the law mm. that um, declares the IBC chairman the returning officer? No. The only part of the law, mm. I think again 38, 138, 12 of, of the constitution, is only given the role to make the declaration. A declaration is to fill that statutory form mm -hmm. of winner, not even of results. Mm -hmm. He makes the declaration of winner. All he's checking right. is that out of the twenty-four count to the forty-seven counties, who has made as the person who's got majority of the votes gotten fifty percent plus one, mm -hmm. writes down. Has he gotten uh, twenty-five percent in at least twenty-four counties? Mm -hmm. He writes down. Mm -hmm. Then he fills the form, what you call a declaration of a winner. Mm. Okay. Not the declaration of results. Okay. A because even that declaration of a winner only has the name of the winner. Yes. He doesn't have the name of all the candidates. Okay. Yes. But for him to do that, mm. like you've said, he mm. has got to do the, the clerical bit. Yes. Which is number one, mm -hmm. receive all the results from the 290 constituencies. Mm -hmm. Number two, mm -hmm. look at the 290 constituencies mm -hmm. with regards to the counties. Yes. Number three, mm -hmm. look at those counties and yes. see whether there's anybody who has surpassed the half 50% yes, in those one. counties. Yes. And then look at the final, whether you have surpassed the 50% nationally mm. plus, one. plus one. Yes. For you to declare the winner. Yes. So you cannot just to issue a declaration uh, certificate for, to the winner. <laughs> for you to declare. Yes. <laughs> How different is that from the job that a returning officer is doing at the constituency. You see, a returning officer is in charge of the polling process. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Him is in charge of making sure that the franchise of the person, the individual voter, that is his primary concern, that he tells you where your polling station is, he makes sure you're in the register, he gives the necessary administrative arrangements for you to go and cast your ballot. Okay. Then that returning officer makes sure that he processes your ballot from the polling station to your constituency showing the results for every single person. The IBC chairman does not, in his declaration of a winner, capture what every single person has gotten in the elections. Mm -hmm. Him is looking at who is the winner in terms of the aggregates that you've just given, mm -hmm. taken. So he's not actually conducting an election, mm -hmm. so to speak. The election is conducted down there, yes. So he's just declaring what has happened Thank at you. the constituency. Do I, do I okay. hear you to be saying that... Um, some of these functions that the IBC chairman has declared as being his functions mm. are functions that he has abrogated to himself and that they have no legal standing. Absolutely. In fact, he is the perfect epitome of power is taken, it's not given. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I think the state has <laughs> encouraged him <laughs> to take those powers because it's easier if you want to manipulate elections. And that's all the argument we're making in court. Mm. It is easier to manipulate elections at Bomas. Sure. Mm than it is to manipulate at 290 constituencies. Why? 
because in every constituency the ballot boxes are there mm. their agents from the polling stations are all there mm. so even if you wanted to manipulate the agents will say but these are our returns mm. and our boxes are here mm. we've accompanied them so what are you entering mm -hmm. then even in terms of the number that you need to manipulate because the constituency will be releasing their results at different times yep. you'll never know what numbers you need to top up sure and that is why like in the last election why it was easy to know why Nuru started playing his games was that they start with the number from the beginning <laughs> the percentages did not change <laughs> i mean you expected results the, to come from right the margin of difference the <laughs> margin it was the same yeah. throughout <laughs> from 5 to the time it was declared. I mean, <laughs> statistically impossible. No, it's completely yeah. impossible. Okay, so now with the, with the way things stand to, uh, today, yes. going into this election, mm. we know now mm. that the transmitted results mm. are the final results. Yes. That even though there will be manual movement of mm. said results to bomb us later, yes. whatever has been declared at the, at, uh, at constituency. the constituency yes. level is what will be the declaration for the... For, for the el for the election, yes. how is this going to change? If uh, there would be a game changer here, how would it change things or guarantee? Would we see that this now will guarantee a credible election, knowing that what happened when everybody's eyes were there, election observers, party observers, individual observers, knowing that this thing was authentic, would it guarantee an election then that was held with integrity? Yes, it does. In mm. fact, in a very big way. If you look at, for example, in 2007, I mean, one of the greatest success of that election mm. was that the media was able to do exactly what you're saying. Mm. They, kept, they were capturing results as every constituency was making the declarations. Mm -hmm. And everybody was doing their own telling. Media had their, every media was at the telling center. And we could all tell who is winning. Mm. So that when they switched off the media and <laughs> did their own, the whole country knew that now it is the time of theft. <laughs> so, uh, if we really, really want to respect the voice of the people, and I always say the voice of the people is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. If we really respect God, allow the people to speak, allow them to choose, and don't interfere with the exercise of their franchise. But we'll see what they try this time. Could it be then that the undecided vote that you keep speaking of mm. are a factor of this very thing? People voting and then feeling <clears throat> that the elections don't really matter because somebody's going to fiddle with it at some point. So they then ask themselves, why bother? No, no, no. I think, I mean, even if you look at the FGDs that we've had with undecided voters, it is more of, and if I say, the undecided voter in most cases is a policy voter. He wants to own a campaign. They are not people who are disenfranchised as voters. They're just feeling that the political option they have is not representing their interests. And they want to hear a campaign that speaks to their main issues. And those main issues at this point is the economy. But one interesting thing I must point out is that Kenyans are very learned people. They're very intelligent. They know when you are giving them political rhetoric and when you are giving them concise, workable policy proposals. Mm. Uh, that is why when people make, pro the other campaigns have made their proposals, which are about distribution, about distribution of the cake. And as we've, and have, we talk about production of the cake, we are going to bake a bigger cake for everybody. Kenyans are actually uh, in sync with that kind of a conversation because they start asking you when you say you're going to pay a 6,000. Where will it come from? Mm. Our problem is on distribution. When you say you're going to give Boda Boda 10 billion, what is that? Are you trying to tell us that my effort is to be forever be a Boda Boda? Mm. I should not aim high. But as we come and say, no, 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 our campaign is about production. We want to create an environment that the human, limit, the human being is not limited. limited. When you are fearless, you are limitless. And you must operate in an environment that you achieve your ultimate potential and a government that provides that platform. And when we say, for example, that look at our young people, mm. all they need is opportunities, and opportunities within and without. Without in the sense that in Africa today, 
we have 1.3 billion people in sub-Saharan Africa. That's a market. Why should we be carrying our vegetables from uh, Meru and take them to Mirikiti? When we can be carrying them from Meru, take them to Wilson, land them in Lagos Airport. Mm. Lagos has almost 20 million people. Yeah? And they import their bulk of their fresh vegetables are imported. So why can't we use after, after and uh, be a vegetable exporter? So that, that person who is called Mamamboga, that should now be called a green grocer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and expanded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, DRC, yeah, they don't have vegeta enough vegetables. I have to write that down. <laughs> mm. Green you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, these are partners mm. that we can engage with, mm. right? So that's the kind of a conversation for us we have. I go to Siaya uh, at the lake. People go to the lake to bathe. People produce food to eat. Mm. I mean, and in this day and age, you can't just say that I, will, I live to eat. That's <laughs> 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 and then it's, life is so basic that I just need to eat and sleep. Mm. As our <laughs> conversation is about whatever you are producing, yeah. produce it in surplus that you can eat and you can sell. Mm. But right? what it is asking though mm -hmm. is it's it's really boiling to the heart of the issue. Mm. Even looking at the turnout mm. during the recent voter registration campaign by the mm. IEBC, mm. is there trust in the electoral process? And I guess one of the things that you were taking to court, even with this particular matter, with Maina Kea and Hale Khalifa and the others, mm. was the same. How do we get people to trust the process, to make sure, to know that my vote is protected from the moment I walk into that polling center and I make my decision, I cast my ballot, that that shall count. But that, that is, people that is, get to have, I, I, do, do you agree that there is a sense of people feeling this thing uh, has been manipulated? This game has been rigged ab initio. Uh, I will say that to an extent, there's a lot of mistrust mm. that Kenyans, most Kenyans seem to have of the, over the commission. Mm. And IBC has tried, but I believe they've not done their best in terms of addressing that mistrust. Mm. Because for me, the easiest thing that the commission can do to get full public support, mm. simply tell the media houses in a conversation, organize yourselves. Make sure you have presence in all the 290 constituencies. We'll allow you to capture the announcement of results by the constituent returning officers at that level. Mm -hmm. Because uh, every, Ke every Kenyan voter is able to track his ballot from his polling station mm -hmm. to his telling center. Yeah. What they are never able to do is to track their results from the constituency telling centers the to the office. national. Yeah. They are not able to track that. So just say... Up to where the voter can track and can access. Once an announcement is made at that level, tell the voter. Everybody can now see. Everyone can now see. Tell that voter that, okay, you've done your part. You've come to your constituency. These are your results. So let me own my results for Dagoreti North where I vote. Mm -hmm. Let uh, you own your results. I think you also voted in Dagoreti North. No, I voted in Machakos. Machakos. Atheriva. Yeah, own your vote also <laughs> in Machakos. Mm -hmm. Right? Atheriva. That's Atheriva. My vocal constituency. Mm. On your vote also in Mavoko where you vote and uh, the returns. City also can own his votes for Migo Moroni. Mm. So then we can even call each other and start comparing. Not. You don't even need a complicated process that, okay, Eric, what were your returns in Mavoko? We write down. Mm. City, we write down. Me, and everybody knows that this is the integrity of the election. But, but uh, here is the issue. <coughs> Up to that point, mm. the person who's managing, the mm. body that's managing that mm. process mm. is still the same IEBC. If IEBC mm. was in charge of delivering voting material to a polling station, mm. in fact, was in charge of mapping yes. and identifying and declaring that this polling is going stations. to be a polling station, yes. and then delivering materials to that polling station, yes. and welcoming voters and processing voters at mm. that polling station, yes. and allowing the voter to cast their ballot, and the IEBC is also in charge of conducting the vote count. IEBC is in charge of moving that vote and the result from the polling station to mm. the returning officer at the constituency level. Where can the IEBC then be making the, 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 the mistake? Or how is it that IEBC then suddenly becomes mischievous in only transmitting from Dagoretti North Center to Bomas? You know what happens in our elections, and the regular report captures it very well. Mm. The build-up to the election is never a problem. Mm -hmm. In fact, the administrative, the election day, E-Day, 
is never a problem. Perfectly done. If I, if I was to ABC on those preparatory processes, I would give them even B plus, almost A. Mm-hmm. The mischief where the devil lies, mm. the devil lies between the constituency tallying center and the national tallying center. If you remove the national tallying center in our election cycle, mm. I assure you, everybody will want to become the chairman of IBC because it will be the most, the easiest job, the easiest job to do, because. Your job is purely, as I said, it, it's clerical. Yeah. Mm. The election has been done at the constituency level by the returning officers. Everybody has seen the outcomes at that level. Mm. But you see, what they do, they force themselves to be one to control. I'm the one who must do this. My results are the final results. Mm. Those ones are provisional. Mm. And the Supreme Court, I remember one of the judges of the Supreme Court asking the ABC lawyer, so what were those that was being transmitted in, uh, on your screens? Mm. And he called them statistics. Mm. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it reaches a point that you even start referring to people's voices as statistics. Mm-hmm. You're not even sure what they are. Yeah? So IBC just needs to accept that we don't need a national talent center. Is it possible, Willis, mm. that uh, presidential campaigns such as mm. the one you were heading in 2017 mm. and the one you are really involved in now mm. are the ones that also come in and start manipulating with this process at this point? I think it is more, I'll call it the state. The manipulation is done by those who control the instruments of power at the mm. state. Mm-hmm. And IBC may be captured or they've allowed them, the infrastructure to be used by some players in the state to manipulate the results as cast in the polling stations. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's the truth. Uh, so, so it's state capture. It is state capture of the And commission. those who are not in the state but have been in the state before now find themselves out and they're not able to manipulate. No, no. You see, what happens is this. Uh, politicians, the state, and all major players in the society will want to play some role in controlling the outcome of an election. Mm. People want to stifle the voice of the people. And IBC is... Uh, an easy prey mm. to the state, especially mm. when you have a commission that has an appetite to be centralized and uh, operate outside the parameters provided in the constitution. Mm. That why should we have a national... And I keep say, asking them, why do you need this national talent center? It's not necessary. Let these people who want to capture you go and capture their arrows in the 290 constituencies. Because mm. when they go there, they'll meet the people. Mm. Mm? They'll meet the people waiting for them with their ballot boxes. Yeah. Well, it's something I'd like to ask you. <clears throat> you mentioned the non-participation or non-adequate participation of the media in your campaigns. Yes. In an ideal situation, what would you like to see the media doing? What would they do for you to consider their participation as being adequate? Uh, what, we are, what we're asking for, we're not asking for preferential treatment as a campaign. We're only asking for equity and fairness in terms of coverage. And more so, uh, the non-news, let me talk about the, the news, the evening news, for example. What mm. do you call that? The, 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 the bulletins. The bulletins. Mm. The bulletins. Mm. It's more the bulletins, actually, mm. that I will have an issue with that. The bulletins should be fair and give an equal platform mm. to every political campaign. And more so one that is attracting national attention. Mm. Once we get to that stage... The bulletins need to be, actually, it's the bulletins, let me not say even the media, let me say mm. the bulletins need to be fair. Mm. Yeah, if I say it generally like that, I will appear like I'm not even condemning other platforms which have, in my view, have done well in terms of coverage. They've always invited uh, teams from all campaigns, mm. but it's more the bulletins that needs to consciously start giving an alternative. Because as I said, if the two that have been preferred previously were the alternative, mm. This election will have been decided by now. To an extent that this election is is not decided, it means there is still out there a significant portion of voters who want to hear an alternative voice. A different message. Yes. Mm. And that message is not getting... That message is not getting through. And that I appeal to the media just to be fair to us. Mm. Uh, Just let people listen to what we are saying. If our message is not resonating, they will see the results 
in the cavalry themselves. Mm-hmm. I mean, they'll get the feedback from the listeners, yeah. from the people yeah. themselves. Yes. Willis, we thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for coming through. Thank you for telling us about your campaign and thank you for um, educating us on this KI judgment. Thank you very it's much for hosting me. Thank you very much. Willis Otieno is the running mate to Jimmy Wenjigi in the Safina presidential ticket. He says that they are out there, they, they are the alternative voice to the other two voice, big voices that you've been hearing. They are going for a runoff in this election. And he says, once there's a runoff, they're winning. Yeah? Yes. After the runoff, you're winning. We are winning. Abbas. We are in the runoff, mm. we win the elections. Okay. Yes. Kenya's biggest conversation, keep it here for more. It's now 8 a.m. up your life the, news at the, top of the, hour. the latest news from around the world 94.4 spice fm good morning this is news round Dennis Aceto. President Uhuru Kenyatta has challenged the World Health Organization member states to forge a united front in combating pandemics to ensure a healthy world. The president said the WHO member states needed to take bold decisions and actions to ensure those common aspirations of promoting health, keeping the world safe and serving the vulnerable are realized. President Kenyatta spoke in Geneva, Switzerland, when he addressed the first in-person regular session of the World Health Assembly since early 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic was declared a public health emergency of international concern. And the Mani National Congress leader, Musaili Madawadi, has done played the chances of Azimio La Umoja Party presidential candidate Raila Odinga winning the elections in August. Mudavadi, speaking in Baringa County, said that Mount Kenya region is largely anchored by Kenya Kwanzaa supporters. He said Odinga has no chance of garnering enough votes from the region and should withdraw from the race for the State House. Gary Township Member of Parliament Adin Duale has renewed his calls to President Uhuru Kenyatta to appoint the Secretary to the Cabinet, saying the time is running out. Speaking at NEP Girls High School, when he issued bursary checks totaling 40 million shillings to primary and secondary schools as well as colleges, Duale said the assumption of office of the President Act No. 21 of the 2012 clearly stipulates that the leadership of the constitutional office is to be headed by the Secretary to the Cabinet. The committee is mandated under the provision of Section 6 to facilitate the handing over process by an outgoing president to the president-elect and the provision of the security detail and security briefings to the president-elect, among other key functions. The former National Assembly Majority Leader regretted that the president has failed to appoint a holder of the office since 2014, noting that it is a matter that should worry all Kenyans since Parliament is set to dissolve in a few weeks' time. And phase two of the 32 billion shilling second container terminal at the port of Mombasa is complete and set for commissioning next month. Construction of the terminal, which started in September 2018, is expected to increase the port's annual capacity by 450,000 containers, bringing the total annual capacity to 2.1 million containers. Kenya Ports Authority confirmed that the Japanese contractor Tokyo Construction Company Limited has completed the project, which has been described in maritime stakeholders is a game changer. And Migori farmers have been urged to farm monosex fish instead of the traditionally used mixed sex breeds. Migori County Project Coordinator for Agriculture Business Development Program Stanley Muloma explained that monosex fish breeds had a lot of advantages with regard to feeding ratios and faster maturity. Muloma spoke during an occasion to award fish farmers certificates after participating in the ABDP training program on fish farming. Noted that monosex fish do not breed and hence the time lost in mating and breeding processes is compensated on growth. And the government has shut down gold mining at Com area in Isiolo County to pave way for the environmental audit. Speaking at Com Trading Center, Isiolo County Commissioner Geoffrey Monding said the miners were using heavy machines to crush stones in their artisanal activities without minding the environmental impact. He directed those involved in the mining activities to stop operations as the National Environmental Management Authority conducts the environmental impact assessment to give the ecological guidelines before mining mining operations can resume. And the National 7 Circuit Series defending champions KCB RFC at the new George Mwangi Kabebeiri Memorial 7 champions after 
aging out Strathmore Leos 12-10 at the RFUA grounds in Nairobi. Dennis Mwanja's charges scored two tries converting one while Leos scored two unconverted tries in a Navi final. Leos lost position after a forward play with KCB's captain Jacob Oje, who was later named the top Top try scorer scoring the first try after a successful mall. Michael Wanjala adding the extras to give the Ruaraka based side a 7 0 lead at halftime. This is Newswire, Dennis Aceto. Good morning. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. Traffic on Gongro this morning. Getting into the city looks really heavy as you get to that uh, city uh, mortuary roundabout going on towards Community Uhuru Highway. It looks the busiest of the highways this morning, apart from the thicker superhighway, which is thumping with traffic. Um, we're going all the way then from the outer ring junction, well through to Wangari Mathai, which then connects with uh, Waiyaki Way. Unbelievable traffic this morning, and it's really, really busy. We're also looking at Limuru Road, in and outbound traffic. Uh, coming off Kiambu Road is looking a tad better, but it's still um, moving along slowly as you get towards that Muthaiga Square. Inside uh, United Nations Avenue, we're looking at Limuru Road, Red Hill Road, uh, connecting with Sigiri Ridge. There's some traffic there as you come down from that major road from Kitisuru. So quite some traffic in the belly um, of Muthaiga this morning. And then coming out towards Muthaiga Square, also really busy. Uh, ooh, Mombasa Road, not too bad today. It's been really, really good here. Looking at the eastern bypass is where you'll find some traffic. But apart from that, it's your normal Monday morning traffic issues. We'll keep taking a look at it uh, talk to us on Spice FM KE on Twitter. Text 40127. This is the Situation Room, the home of hard hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have CT Muga. Researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power. And Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start Seven your and day. Seven and a half minutes past eight o'clock. Good morning. Welcome to the third hour of Kenya's biggest conversation this 23rd day of March 2022. It's a happy Monday wherever you are. We are starting a new week. This is the final week, final, final yeah, days of this month. Eh? Mm? Okay. Mm. We are still hopeful. <laughs> Never lose hope. Mm. Mm. Never lose hope. Hope burns eternal, doesn't it? Totally. Mm -hmm. We have a new guest in the studio who is in the Azimio campaign for Nairobi gubernatorial race. Before we introduce and welcome Professor Philip Kaloki, let's hear the day's proverb from CT. Do not belittle what you did not cultivate. This is a proverb from Uganda. Do not belittle what you did not cultivate. Yes. Don't look at somebody else's. Well, I can start saying, ah, surely now this one. Bona alipanda maindi. Si angepanda mtamu. Cassava grows very well here. Yeah. Okay, now, all, all those clever ideas, mm. take to your own farm. <laughs> <laughs> and I know it's because he planted two weeks before the rains. <laughs> huh? Should have waited, planted the day of the rains. Mm. That's why it was, the harvest was like this. Mm. Uh, anyway, focus on your own things. Hmm. Do your own things. Professor K K Philip Kaloki, good morning and welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Eric and Ndu uh, uh, and Muga. So happy to be here today, Spice. Uh, you know, this is a, uh, a popular um, 
radio and, and also t- television. I think you cover quite uh, across the country, and I'm so I'm so delighted to be here with you um, uh, to come and uh, uh, talk with you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for inviting me. Karibu sana. That is the hot seat that you're the one that you're occupying, <laughs> and because you're in Nairobi, and we are in Nairobi, and you want to be the next deputy governor of Nairobi, I expect this one to be quite comfortably hot <laughs> as we have the conversations. Thank you. Um, be running for deputy governor in Nairobi County. My governor is uh, Mr. Polika Bigade, mm-hmm. and so I'm um, be looking forward to also to work with him. You've done quite a shift, though. Initially, you had I, I was in Water during the devolution conference, correct, and I saw a huge billboard as you enter Water. Yes, Professor Philip Kaloki, <laughs> governor. Next thing I'm hearing, Philip Kaloki is in Nairobi. <laughs> what happened? Um, actually, yes, and uh, that is good observation. Uh, running there as a governor, Makueni County, and uh, moving on very well there. And as we are doing all that, then uh, you know, with Azimio, La Moja One Kenya Alliance, um, and and also concerns with the city and some other interest uh, here. Um, you, you know, us, we will we'll be able to, we, we can uh, work or serve any part of the country. And so, um, so through the negotiations that took place we, with that umbrella, then uh, um, I, I'm here. And, and also some, we, we have also quite a number of uh, uh, Kenyans, so mm. campus in, in, in Makueni also mm. reside here in this big city, our capital city here. And, and so all that uh, uh, interest and uh, being asked to, 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 to come and buy here, um, then I accepted that challenge. And uh, that is why we are here in our capital city, uh, here in Nairobi. So is this a wiper journey from Makueni into Nairobi, into negotiations then taking place, and you end up being the running mate for Polycap Gather of Jubilee? Uh, 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 correct, actually. Uh, within Asimio Laumoja Wani Kenya Alliance, uh, myself, um, my party is Waipa. And my governor, Mr. Polika Bigade, uh, is Jubilee. And so the, 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 the Waipa now and the Jubilee, um, they're in this government terror um, together and uh, under that umbrella, Asimio. Uh, Asimio. Okay. It's very interesting that you say this, and uh, we thank you for the candor. What essentially I am hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that in the political sphere of this country, there are certain things that have to be negotiated. The optics that we as lay uh, persons uh, seem to perceive may not be quite. Now, if it's possible, if it isn't, then it isn't, but if it's possible... How did the negotiations play out? I'm asking this because there was a gentleman in ODM called Tim Wanyonyi who had also wanted this same seat. Correct. And we have others who also wanted this same seat. So maybe you can educate us. How did the negotiations come up so that it is you who is deputy and not governor and they gather your deputy? How? how? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you know here there are political parties yes. and the political uh, leaders mm-hmm. uh, in those political parties. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and so they will try to balance um, the, the interest in this city. We have different communities here. All the Kenyans live here. And that being the case then, there is a, a women rep um, representative who is equivalent to a member of parliament but <laughs> across the entire county. Mm-hmm. So we, that must be a consideration. Um, from a particular community, then you have another part of the uh, of the country, uh, Western Kenya. Um, we, we we have um, Sifuna, uh, also from ODM, mm. and also part of this Asimio uh, to run for senator. Then um, we have now the governor, uh, also to come from uh, Jubilee. So you can see that pattern of negotiation. Then Waipa also being another dominant party in this equation also producing the deputy governor. So uh, the majority here in, in this city, it is also Jubilee. Mm-hmm. It's a popular party here with a lot of followers. And uh, through that negotiations, then they saw it fit to be able to produce the governor. Okay. 
I think of Nairobi as a county, and I think of the immense responsibility that the city bears for the country, but then I also look at the immense need that the city has. And then when I see this movement of individuals within parties and coalitions, whereby there's this negotiation taking place, then it almost seems to me as though the needs and the responsibility that Nairobi has then is not being given focus and attention. It is just something that somebody will take and do because of the zoning and negotiation that has taken place at coalition and party level. What happens to these huge needs that Nairobi has when somebody previously had had a different idea of what they were going to do? And then because of coalition and party negotiations, it's like, all right, well, then you just take this or you have the other thing. Where is the seriousness that the city or the county deserves to have with an individual who is focused on delivering? Actually, do you are saying it very well. And that was the main consideration. Um, to hear the, the, the political parties mm -hmm. and through those negotiations were mostly guided by those needs, mm -hmm. capacity, experience, to be able to get these leaders within those particu uh, particular uh, uh, parties. If it is ODM, Sifuna for him to be able to be the Senate um, nominee, a lot of other considerations uh, within that ODM. There were other aspirants belonging to that ODM. Mm. In, in WIPA, there were others. But through these negotiations, they were looking also the, cons the concerns of the city, the capacities of these leader leaders, uh, and, and also to be able to, br to bring a team, a team that can deliver for, uh, for Nairobians. Mm. And so it was just not just picking an individual. Mm. There were other considerations that were uh, at play here. And that's how uh, this team uh, was able uh, to be uh, um, unveiled. Mm. And this is the team that we are working with. Why do you think you were selected as a running mate? I'm looking at uh, uh, something that was covered in Battleground today and saying the choice of deputy in a governor's race could make or break aspirants, right? Why do you think you were selected for this position? I mean, coming off wanting to be governor in another county, why do you think you were selected then for this? Well, first of all, um, I'm grateful to the, to the political uh, parties and and the leadership of these parties. Uh, my background, um, I've, I've had quite um, an experience that I, saw, uh, it, I, I believed was, it was a consideration. Uh, being a member of parliament, first I served in the larger Kibwezi um, for five years. I was able also during that particular time, I was able uh, to undertake various committees in the parliament. I was a member of uh, a speaker's panel, that meant uh, uh, when the speaker was not there, uh, we, we, I was one of those uh, speaker's panel members that were had the opportunity to, to, to be able to, uh, to run the, the parliament. And mm. also um, being able to be, I was vice chair, um, finance and trade committee, and, and so a lot of experience that I was able to bring uh, and I'm bringing also uh, to this equation. And also, during that particular time, I had the opportunity uh, to do, to initiate a lot of uh, development projects, uh, working with the development partners, we were able to pull a lot of resources to Kibwezi, and also um, we established a lot of schools um, uh, during my term, more than uh, 50 new uh, secondary schools mm -hmm. were able to, to establish in the larger Kibwezi, putting communities together, uh, working with development partners, working with the constituency development fund, were able to, to do uh, a lot and initiating a lot of uh, uh, projects, including uh, new roads during that particular time. And so all that um, is, is an experience which is also coming to this public service. Uh, also do, um, after that particular time, um, I, I ran for governor in, in, in Makueni. Professor Kibuta Kibwana won that particular time, mm -hmm. came second. And then His Excellency, the President now, Uru Kenyatta, appointed me to be the chair mm -hmm. uh, or chairman, Kenya Medical Training College, um, a, a, a position that uh, it was able uh, to be renewed every th uh, three years. I was able to, to, to work there for almost eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we did quite a lot there, uh, expanding medical training uh, mm -hmm. uh, colleges across the country. By that time, the campuses were 28. Mm -hmm. By the time I left, 
they moved from 28 mm. to 71 mm. uh, across the country. Mm -hmm. Now, working with the governors, working with the development partners, working with the members of parliament, we were able to, to, to pull a lot of resources mm -hmm. and mobilize a lot of resources to Kenya Medical Training College. And also the number of students now were able to move uh, from 19,000, the number that I found, were able to move from 19,000 to over 50,000 students in all these campuses, mm. bringing a lot of revenue to Kenya Medical Training College and bringing a lot of uh, capacities uh, for the hospitals through this training of competent health workers. And that's why you are able to see the government uh, led by His Excellency the President negotiating with other countries so that these medical students, the surplus now, beyond what we need in Kenya, mm. can be able to go out and work out there. And, and, and as a result, uh, that will be able to bring a lot of revenue okay. uh, to this country. There's a lot of work that was done, uh, credit where it's due, though. Um, if you see moving from 28 campuses to 71 campuses, we've even talked about it here bef uh, before on the show, that nowadays you go into every county and you will find a KMTC campus. In some counties, you have more than one KMTC mm -hmm. campus. That's correct. Which is a good thing when you look at uh, developing our healthcare. And when you talk about universal health coverage and all, it's a good thing. Increasing the number of students and the those who are graduating is a good thing. Your stint also at KMTC did not end so well, though. There was some blot somewhere. <laughs> and this is a matter that even went to court, the Labor uh, Relations Court. Um, if they attempt to dismiss the then the CEO, Professor Michael Kipto, and Professor Michael Kipto went to court and said, you know what, the chairman has been abusing his office. The chairman has irregularly appointed a company secretary, and the chairman has had even uh, an affair with the company secretary. <laughs> For that reason, there's a campaign that's been launched by Transparency International, TISA, um, and others that is called the Red Card Campaign, mm. and you're among those that are in the Red Card Campaign. You've mm. been red carded, Professor Philip Kaloki, mm the Deputy Gubernatorial Aspirant for Nairobi County, because of abuse of office as KMTC board chair by irregularly appointing KMTC's company secretary who was unqualified for the position, also failed to declare interest during the appointment of the secretary who had personal relations with you, and the court said that you acted illegally, irrationally, and unreasonably. Therefore, according to this campaign, you failed the integrity <laughs> test. Uh, Eric, uh, that, that is just a story. There's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. One, there is no uh, any company secretary appointed by the chairman. Uh, you know how corporations work, state corporations. We have um, a team of management that they do recruitment, they, they advertise, then you have committees in, uh, in a board, a committee, and all these committees, the chairman is not uh, a member. Remember, I was chairman of a board. Mm. I'm not, uh, not a chief executive officer. And all those processes will take place, and they will be able to go through an intensive uh, um, recruitment exercise whereby other parties will play, and, and, and then a recommendation will be done, and a letter of appointment then will be done by uh, the CEO. Mm. In all this, uh, Professor Philip Kaloki, I'm not involved. And so there was no uh, and, and any uh, declaration of interest because there was no uh, any, 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 any interest. And that court uh, you, you, you are talking about there, mm. it has nothing to do with, uh, with the Professor Philip Kaloki um, because you mentioned uh, Professor Michael Kipto. This is a board matter mm. with the issues that I don't want to go through here. Uh, because Professor Kipto is not sitting here, um, there were m issues that the board felt um, they, they needed to, to dismiss uh, the CEO. Mm. And that is not Kaloki. There, 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 there are issues that, that took place there. And uh, he went to court after being dismissed and uh, to fight back to be able uh, to be reinstated. Mm. That is the court. And all this is, is it has nothing to do with uh, Professor Philip Kaloki as a mm. chair. Mm. And when you look at those documents, there was nowhere uh, where there was issues of declaring interest. Uh, this is, it was his defense, and you don't see the judge uh, himself um, mentioning anything to do with that. That was his side of story, that the, 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 the court did not find any merit uh, to be able to deal with it. These were objective matters, 
accounts that the CEO was to be able to deal with them. And uh, even if you look at that, uh, uh, the, 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 the red card, as, mm. as they are calling it, it has nothing to do with uh, uh, Kaloki himself doing anything. And that, I think, will be corrected because mm. it has nothing to do with uh, myself as, uh, as, as, as Kaloki or the former chairman mm. of Kenya Medical Trading College. So the court did not at all deal with some of these allegations that no, were brought no, no. by the former no, CEO, no. By, by the then former CEO at that point. The court did not address the issues that were raised by the CEO? Did not. The, those were the side of the story mm. for Professor Kipto to defend himself. Uh, those were just his side. If you look at that, the judgment had nothing to do with uh, myself being partisan mm. on any issue. Remember, chairman of, uh, of a board. board. You are dealing with many members there. Mm. It's, not, it's not an issue of uh, uh, Professor Philip Kaloki. Um, this is a um, board, independent, representing different ministries mm. um, that sit in that uh, particular board. Mm. And this is not a personal uh, issue that you bring uh, to the board. Mm. Do you think there was any merit in raising issues of your personal integrity here? Uh, you, you know, we are campaigning mm. and uh, being a campaign period, uh, everybody, and I appreciate mm. uh, we need also leaders that uh, they can be able to undertake a, a, a public service. And so, um, but also the only thing they are doing is to be able to bring things that uh, um, they, they are out of uh, this world uh, without looking deeper on, mm. on those particular issues. Are they really out of this world? Sorry, I'm, I have to, you know, it's, it's important because we are talking about being a deputy governor of the capital city of Nairobi, mm. the biggest income generating county in the, in the country, Correct. the capital of the country. Are these small matters though? Was there an issue of you having a relationship with an employee of KMTC? You know, there's no relationship. It's not there. Okay. It's, uh, it has been looked. There is nothing. Here, this is what you call allegations, which are not um, uh, anything to do with uh, myself. These are the issues that we have brought as a result of uh, uh, somebody else who had some difficulties and uh, some challenges at work. And that is, was his defense that uh, uh, we are able to bring up. All right. City. You know, one of the things about being in politics, you then move from being a private citizen to a property of the public. And sometimes they will turn your life inside out any allegation, anything that has ever been said, not proven, just spoken about you, will come into the open. And I dare say, if you actually do get into that seat, it won't get better, it'll get worse. Because now, there'll be people who have all manner of things that they want to say, and the things that they feel, and they'll go into history. But let's push that aside. What is this one thing that the Egade, <coughs> Professor Kaloki, duo purpose to do for this city that hasn't been done before we've had two governors uh, three is it two and a half four <laughs> nairobi has had four governors, four governors swearing oath of office that's what i'm uh, <laughs> so my see i'm not good at maths yeah, me i stopped yeah, at two and a half <laughs> i should have added one and a half more yeah. to make it four what is this thing that you will want to set in motion that when we look at this pair will be saying yes Nairobi City, Nairobi City County has a hope. We can see this city turning around to being what we've always thought was its full potential and what we hope will continue being so. Um, Mungo, Munga. Munga. Uh, Munga. Yes. let me tell you, uh, the, the reason why we'll be different, mm. if you look at uh, Mr. Polika we gather mm. and you look at Kaloki, mm. um, the experience that we are bringing to this, uh, our backgrounds, uh, lived outside this country, have worked in the U.S. Mm. Um, Mr. Polika Bigade, likewise, has done that, has been able to lead serious uh, institutions in this country, private companies in this country. Um, we, we are looking to reform the city as it is. We will be different because even the way we are getting our manifesto, the things that the people are telling us. We are going to get it directly uh, to the people. Mm. We are moving there. 
We are, we are trying to talk to border borders, and they are telling us uh, this is the, the challenges that taxis people. This is the, our issues that we are facing. For example, w once we pick people from this particular area and we go to the CBD, there is not even a place to, to drop off uh, our people. We are being harassed by the city uh, security people as car is there. So we are facing challenges. When you go to these communities, we're finding a, a actual problems facing uh, the, the people, sewage issues, drainage, we can see it. We can see also what goes on. We can see the garbage that's supposed to be collected, and then we are finding also challenges. This is supposed to be uh, cleaned up. It's not being cleaned up because we are there. We can be able to see it. So if there's any difference, we'll be able to bring the team uh, coming in. It is because we are in touch with the ground. So the policies we'll be able to make uh, at the city hall will be based on the reality on the ground. At the same time also, we want to be able to reform the city by making sure we, we at least not only going back to way we used to be, um, a beautiful city and the sun, green, we want to not only returning that, but we want to build a world-class uh, capital city here, whereby we can be able to attract uh, more investments to be able to come to this country. So we are looking the entire county and this entire county, we want really to initiate uh, people-driven uh, programs to be able to benefit the people. Mm. Let's take a break. Sure. <laughs> it's half past eight. This is Kenya's biggest conversation. Professor Philip Kaloki, who is Poli Kapigadhe's running mate for the Nairobi gubernatorial race, is in the situation room with us. We'll also be asking about what they've been doing. You know, wana piki watu gali, wana fungua gates. All those things. They got the campaign. We'll be talk we are talking about what the uh, what it takes to run Nairobi and what Professor Kaloki brings into this particular race. This is Kenya's biggest conversation, alerting you about the Kenya Revenue Authority that tells you, all right, so you have a tax, tax dispute with Kerry. The commissioner, let's say, has written to you and said, um, this is the issue. We believe that you ought to be paying this amount of tax and you haven't paid. And then you object and they tell you, yes, this is the situation. You go to the tax dispute tribunal. The tax dispute tribunal comes up with the, um, a declaration and you feel that this is not the way to go. Mm. You can actually use alternative dispute resolution mechanisms to deal with this particular matter, uh, getting in this matter sorted within 90 days as opposed to the others that could take years. And Kerry is telling you, how about we all embrace ADR? It's a good way. We deal with it. We deal with it expeditiously. And we are able to unlock some of these disputes and even some of these tax and some of the money that uh, has been frozen, maybe accounts frozen. All this is possible with the alternative dispute resolution with Kerry. We'll tell you more and more about it as days go by. 2089. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. No, you know, this wheelbarrow, uh, how can you give people wheelbarrow? It's part of symbol, is, uh, is an umbrella. Is he distributing umbrellas in McQueen? Have you been told, if we don't lock between 10 to 4, this is what we're saving? You try and call them, the same person who was in your house every day, because they know you're influential, and you will give them votes. Call them after one month and see if they'll pick up their phone. Don't tell your member of parliament that you want, you want him to come and build a school, you want him to come and do a hospital. That is not the work of the member. Now that we have devolution in this country, this resources should go to those devolved units. You have to have strong independent institutions. And I mean, you have to have police who has the right to take the biggest town in the country and question why did you do this and that and send them to court if necessary. Joel in Kericho, good morning. Salama kabisa mbunga wako nani? Anaitwa Silvanas Martin, hapa ni aina moja. Silvanas Martin aina moja. Yes. Eh eh. Sasa ile juma na mpana mpambia hii ni. Eh. Amadise aende. Oh wow. That's it. The situation room. Kenya's biggest conversation. Partly cloudy conditions in Nairobi this morning will see highs of 26 and lows of 17. At 18, it's mostly cloudy in Nakuru, highs of 25 and lows of 15. Sunny at 18 in Yeri, highs of 25, we'll see lows of 13. We'll also see lows of 13 in a cloudy Eldoret, currently at 17. We'll see highs of 23 through Monday. Mostly sunny conditions at 27 in Mombasa, highs of 31 and lows of 26. 
And it's partly sunny at 28 in Malindi with highs of 31. We'll see lows of 27. Mostly cloudy in Kisumu at 22. Go to highs of 27 and we'll see highs of 27 as well in Kakamega where it's cloudy at 21. Kampala still raining at 21. Highs of 27. Sunny conditions in Dar es Salaam at 25. We'll go to highs of 32. Slightly warmer in Johannesburg now at 6 degrees, a foggy morning, highs of 17 and lows of 5 today. But it's mostly clear at 24 in Lagos. It'll go to highs of 31 and we'll see highs of 29 in a, sh in a sunny Kinshasa, currently at 21. Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul, and nostalgic ballads. Make some noise. Yeah. You're listening to Spice All right, FM. looking bad on Mombasa Road at all. What was happening on Imara Daima? That has cleared out uh, in and outbound. It's uh, free and clear. Not a problem there. On the Southern Bypass, there's your quick route into the city if you want to avoid all these other things that are going on. But Mombasa Road is actually not that bad. Lunga Lunga, we're looking at in and outbound traffic. Jogo Road from Hamza out towards the... Um, roundabout at the city stadium getting onto Landis Road now is when we see that packing up as you're getting towards that Kamkunji roundabout inbound traffic is quite something right now and Uhuru Highway then into the city and out towards Westlands on the thicker superhighway it is not letting up really heavy and we're connecting with Wangari Highway in one direction and Moranga Road on the other uh, there's to watch out uh, for that if you head in that direction it's slowing down quite some the northern bypass is an option there's a long route uh, then into the city all right Limuru Road still continues Kiambu Road still doing that thing. So we'll keep an eye on things. Limuru Road way up ahead is really heavy in terms of traffic coming off United Nations Avenue. Let's keep an eye on things as we go into the morning. Spice FM KE on Twitter. Text for 0127. Spice FM. Nieri. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Right. It's 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. The Situation Room on Spice FM on KTN Home. We're also live streaming the show on YouTube and Facebook. Our pages, Spice FM KE. It's Eric Latif, Ndu Oko, CT Muga. And our guest, Professor Philip Kaloki, who is Polycap Igade's running mid for the Nairobi gubernatorial race. Prof, just looking at the pair of you, Polycap Igade and yourself, you have a bit more experience in political campaigning than Polycarp. Polycarp was elected as the deputy governor for the first time that he joined politics, elective politics, in uh, 2017. You have been a member of parliament. You have contested uh, the Makwene gubernatorial race. You have been in the political campaigns. So you've got a bit more experience than him. If we look at the conversation that the two, he, uh, Polycarp and Mike Sonko, were having in 2017, was Mike Sonko was a man who knew the politics and the ground could listen to the ground very well and Polycup was this man who's come from the corporate world he knows how to run business he knows how to negotiate he knows how to get things moving and so the conversation then was we have a politician and we've got a technocrat coming into office this time we could say similar kind of thing you know we've got a politician in professor kaloki we've got the technocrat in uh, Polycup igade is that how you're hoping to run this campaign and even run the government? As uh, the one I mean, person who understands the ground and then Polycup, the, the man who understands how to get things done? Well, uh, I think both of us have different uh, backgrounds, um, but all, all together we'll be able to bring all these experiences uh, together. And there's also, I've, I'm also a corporate person, uh, being able to have that experience, public service, I do, I've also worked in a private university in the U.S., so I also bring that uh, private uh, perspective into it. But um, we, we, we can say uh, for Polica we gather with this experience, there's a lot of uh, uh, backgrounds and business, business undertaking mm -hmm. in, in the city. And also you are dealing with uh, this being the capital city. Uh, I actually want to say Polybigade will be able to bring a, a lot of uh, uh, experience in, in that particular area. Being able uh, to, to run or being in the top management of serious uh, uh, corporate entities uh, in this country. So that exposure 
he worked with a lot of business uh, people in this city. And uh, this being a capital city, uh, our, our, our main city, and also understanding a lot of uh, gross domestic product, our industries are here, mm. um, and, 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 and industrial parks, uh, and, and also wild bodies also located in this, in this city. We, we are going to have a governor who understands, who can relate with these uh, corporate entities, mm. with these uh, international bodies located in, the, in, in, uh, in, in, in our country and in this city. And so we are going to, 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 to tap a lot of uh, uh, untold uh, experience from Polika Pigabe. So him being the governor, uh, we, you, I can assure you this city is in good hands. And myself being there as a deputy governor, we'll be able to work together and also bring that uh, uh, public service into it. Mm -hmm. and, and we should get a good pair to be able to, uh, to move a, a lot of uh, service uh, delivery uh, to our people here in Nairobi. Okay. If I go back to some of the things you said that would happen, I mean, talking about border border operators, talking about uh, the state of garbage in the city, et cetera, et cetera. Why do you reckon these things were not done before in this city? even at some point with one Polycarp Igave as a deputy governor? Actually, um, Polycarp Igave, we cannot say he did not do it. Polycarp Igave was there for um, less than six months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that particular time, I think you know the story. Mm -hmm. the, the, the chemistry, the working together wasn't there. For whatever reasons was there, they did not work together. So it not it was not a, a deputy governor for five years. Okay. And so whatever happened, we cannot uh, bring it up and, and, and load it up on Polypic Igade. Secondly, also, um, let's also appreciate the fact this is a, a city that uh, it has a lot of uh, entities working here. Mm -hmm. um, yes, uh, over time. Uh, we want a clean city, and every person talks about that. But do we get time to go there and see whether the garbage has been collected? Uh, it, 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 it needs personal um, interventions. It needs somebody really to, to leave the, the office, to go there, and, and, and try to see how the people are living out there. And that's exactly what myself and Polly Pigade we are doing. We are moving to these particular parts of, uh, of, of the areas. We are finding ECDs. Um, early child uh, uh, schools mm -hmm. for parents mm -hmm. in many of the slum areas, they are lacking. And the parents there, they are really suffering on where to take their, their kids. So ECDs will be able to establish them. It is in our plan to be able to assist these uh, mothers and, and, and the kids. So we have these uh, issues that when we go there, you are finding like buckets. Mm. You find uh, a lot of harassment. People are trying to make a decent living. They want to sell their, their wares out there. But the problem is there are no markets. That being the responsibility of the city hall, uh, led by the governor, the deputy governor working there, they should be able to, to put a budgetary allocations to be able to deal with these matters, to establish decent markets, so that we can also uh, ups, uh, put our um, our, our scales up and also to improve the city. So there's a lot to be, to, to be able to do. So the connection is to move out from the city hall, you go where the arena is mm. to be able to establish that and to be able to come and uh, uh, do those particular uh, uh, processes mm. and also you supervise by going out. Mm. Professor, I don't doubt your intentions. I don't doubt the conviction and the zeal you have I don't even doubt that you and uh, one Mr. Polika Pigade have the ability, have uh, the technical know-how to do what requires doing. What I want to know is the heart of the matter in the city of Nairobi is not what needs to be done, but how you overcome what we refer to as cartels. Because everything we hear about Nairobi is that's the cartels who control the city. Everything that would otherwise make this city a beautiful city, whether it works or doesn't work, is determined by this faceless group of people we refer to as the cartels. How do you plan to manage and deal with this group? Because they're in existence. It's not a phantom uh, concept. It's a reality of this city. Well, you can talk about a cartel, but the reality is that could be also be an amorphous issue there. Mm. Because if, for example, garbage is not collected, there is a dealer, there is a contractor supposed to pick the garbage, and you go there, it's not picked. 
if you don't supervise, then you'll be able to pay that contractor or that service provider for not services that have been delivered. Then that that is what you're talking about. So if you let that to continue, then it becomes cartels mm. um, dominating the garbage collection. Cartels are dealing with the water because we are not going there to see whether the water is reaching to where the people are and moving out there and, and working and training and working with these uh, service providers. If you fail to do that, then over time you begin complaining for your deficiencies that you're not being able to work, and then you begin to, to say cartels. Uh, the, 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 we, we cannot work. We cannot provide water. Mm -hmm. We can't provide services to the city because of cartels. So that, are we saying, if I may interject, that right now, that there don't exist groups of people that are controlling the operations of certain things in this city and then are getting money for it? Are we saying they don't exist? Uh, they're, they're there, but they're not doing what they're supposed to be able to do. Oh no, we understand that. But the question is, then how will we get rid of them in order to run the city properly? It is because of the, the it's, it's a leadership issue. Mm. If you go there and supervise, mm. if uh, today you do not come to the show, do. Mm. If you are not here, uh, then uh, my friend Eric doesn't show up the following day. You are being paid. You are not doing what you are supposed to be able to do. Mm. Then we come and say in KTN, uh, there, there, there are cartels. You need to go there and, and uh, supervise Mm. and they pay for services that are being delivered mm. so that you deal with it. And if, if it is a particular person, you need to train them to be able to take their, their responsibilities a little bit serious. Mm. I, at the same time, you, that's the only way you can deal with that. And I say in quotation, that cartel. Mm. You make sure they do the services. If you get a contract, you deliver. They need to, to establish mechanisms uh, on how to monitor that service delivery to make sure the work is being done. So it's impunity that breeds cartels. It is, that's what it is. And you leave it alone. You don't supervise. Mm. You, you pay for claims for work that not being done. And you continue that way. Then you come and complain mm. about cartels. These are people. These are Nairobians. And uh, once you work with them, they want to do a decent work. And they want to be paid for it. Prof, do you think it's the right thing to do for the city county of Nairobi to be contracting out many of these jobs? Garbage collection, contracted. Water provision, in some cases, contracted. Yet the county government owns the Nairobi uh, Water and Sewerage Company. Very many of these services are being subcontracted. Should, is this the right way to go? Actually, if you, if you look at the globally, the trend, mm -hmm. if you go to the city of Dallas at the moment, I was there about mm -hmm. two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I checked on this particular matter and checked who is collecting the garbage in the city of, of Dallas, mm -hmm. and I found it's a private contractor. But you know what? They are schedules on how they're collecting the, in, in the homes, in the, in where people are staying, in the city. And I took time to understand this. That is being managed by a private contractor. But do they do the work? Yes. Is the city clean? Yes. Is, is, and also you go to the rivers. There's a river there uh, uh, actually passing through the city of, of Dallas. Mm. That river is clean. What is happening? Nobody is throwing um, trash there. Or, or, or anything that coming from, from industries industrial and factories, waste. Mm. industrial waste, it's a clean city. You go to different uh, other, other parts. You go to, there's a river there in uh, San Antonio. I uh, was able to have an opportunity to be there. It's a clean river. And, and so what, what is causing this? There are rules. There are bylaws. People are following it. They are being enforced. And uh, over time, then you develop that culture. And that is what we want to do for our rivers here also in Nairobi. And, and, and also once we do those things, mm. we supervise, we borrow from best practices, and we are serious. We retrain our, our people who are working there in the city, have a lot of experience. Once they know there's a change, people are going to adopt to the top leadership. Okay. So what I hear you saying is the problem is actually not even the contractors. The problem is the supervision. Exactly. Which means that the problem is at City Hall. It's at City Hall. The people who work in City Hall. And the top leadership. How do you change that culture? That is the culture we, we are bringing. And culture, you, of course, you bring it uh, slowly. Mm -hmm. uh, training, conversation, exposures uh, over time. It may take three years for us to be able to move in the right direction. But you start the right way to show 
we are, we, are, we are going to reform this. And that must also come from our staff. The staff are experienced. They have many years of experience. Mm. They want to do a good work. But once they lack from the top leadership experience, then they are going to let it go. But if you work with them, they need to know the need of doing this. You don't need to threaten them. You need to work with them. And they'll be able to do and bring the changes that, that are needed. And so what we are, we are saying here, we'll be able to work with our staff and we'll be able to move in that direction. Uh, the direction will be clear. There'll be uh, targets. There'll be delivery along the way. And also we'll be able to balance what services need to be contracted out, which ones need to be done by our, our officers uh, within the city. What do you think about social contracts or performance contracts then for, um, you know, the, the county bosses and their deputies to say, this is what you said you would do. And after some time, we hold you to account and say, well, this happened or this didn't happen. And then we score you on that, which could essentially determine whether you continue in this position or then, you know, you don't. Exactly. What do you think about that? I embrace that. I agree to it. At the Kenya Medical Training College as a, as a board chair, each year we had a, a performance contract. Mm -hmm. We had specific targets. Targets for the chief executive officer, uh, targets for the board, targets for various m managers and uh, different all the way um, to, to campuses and to, uh, to the manager. So the targets will make the organization to move in the same direction. You'll be able to ensure deliveries are being uh, implemented and achieved along the way. And the targets that you have set as a board, then the, the organization will be able to move on as an entity. Likewise, in the city of Nairobi, we'll be able, if this is not done, and I believe it's not being implemented or it's not worked out, we'll be able uh, uh, to establish those particular targets, performance uh, co co contracts for the staff, so that those deliveries will be there. And once this is done and supervised well, and the reviews are done there, and the rewards are, uh, will, will be given at the end of the year. You'll be able to see a major shift of our attitudes and the people will be able to appreciate uh, their work. One of the issues that um, has been, you know, a problem for Nairobi, not one, but I'll talk about three. One is garbage. That is waste management. Second is water provision. And third is sanitation. And I'm separating water and sanitation deliberately here. Let's talk about water and sanitation. With a growing uh, population in Nairobi, there is increased pressure mm -hmm. on water availability. With a growing population in Nairobi, and we are seeing the increase in the number of low-income uh, neighborhoods propping up, mm -hmm. there's an issue with sanitation. What plans do you have for that? Well, this is, a, and, and I'm glad you're saying it, this is a, an area that we'll be able to look at it. We've been able to move uh, uh, around the city, and we have not noticed the same. You see, the city has grown. Um, it's really go grown from the time the, the infrastructure was able to, uh, to be put up. Uh, we have really moved up. Mm -hmm. And so there's another project coming in, and I appreciate the government is supporting that project uh, to be able to increase additional water supply, but that is not enough. We are going to take this seriously for the first time and we'll be able to work with the development partners, also looking at our own revenue uh, to be able to move in that particular direction to make sure we have sufficiency of water supply in the city. If you go to Karen, the issues uh, is water. If you go to Kagemi, you find the same issues will be there. If you go to the Eastlands, uh, talking about Mbakasi and the five wards there, mm -hmm. everybody talks about water. We were in Madara yesterday. And the people are talking about water. Uh, once you get there, can you ensure we get water here? We don't get water. And people are spending a lot of uh, their income towards uh, providing warm uh, water mm. for, their, uh, for their domestic use. So what I can assure you here, Polycap we gather and Kaloki, once we, 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 we come to this city, we'll ensure we work with all the partners to ensure we deal with this problem. We'll be able to deal with our engineers uh, just to make sure we have a permanent solution to deal with this water and sanitation at the same time. Prof, if you look, Prof, we've heard this before. So mm. how exactly are you going to do it? Um, you're you, talking about those areas. You're talking about pipeline and Bakasi and the rest. There is no pipe for water. Okay. So what are you going to do? L let me tell you. First, uh, look at the, our revenue. Mm. We looked at the revenue collection. We are collecting like a quarter uh, of the revenue that is being collected in this city. Are and you receiving a quarter of what is collected? What is supposed to be collected, uh, yes. Muga, yes. you're finding just a quarter of it 
is what is tabulated and recorded as having and been recorded for be able to 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 take care of the three quarters and the use and that means then mm-hmm. the services th- they'll be deficient mm-hmm. we are going to find every service then we cannot deliver the, to the level that is it is supposed to be required mm-hmm. and so here one we have to up our game in the revenue collection look at the land rates they're not being collected mm. and very little of it is being collected. You go globally, you're finding this is the engine, this is what moves. Pro- Pro- Professor Kaloki, there's, yes. there's something I wanted just to uh, clarification. Yes. Is it that it's not being collected or is it it's being collected but it's not remitted? Well, first, um, I just want to talk about the collection part of All right. it. Carry on which on the is, which part. is clear. Mm. You can document. There are facts out there. Mm. You're going to find the collection. There's no a serious mechanism not only the the this government which is the county government even the past one which is a Kedero's during that particular time mm. the uh, Kedero tried a little bit he, he was able to to really give some exemptions and he was able to encourage that mm. but but there was a lot that was still lacking over mm. time and so we we are going to look this a little bit seriously and the people are willing we went to to a place in Eastlands and we were there and uh, you, once we are here, you are getting the story um, uh, that we are willing to pay uh, land rates. This is Meango. They are saying, you know what, we are lacking title deeds. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and you are finding Utawala area, Meango, these are two words there, mm-hmm. a lot of population there. None of these dwellers, and they have houses, none of them are paying uh, land rates. Land rates. Mm-hmm. This is the money to assist in building and reforming our city. So we start with the revenue collection. Mm-hmm. Even before we talk about development partners, we look at our internally generated incomes that we can be able to tap in. Mm-hmm. And once we look at that, mm-hmm. a lot of things we'll be able to do. But you, Professor, what is the potential of the Nairobi County? Yes, collection, excellent. But if you don't work on the collection against what you know the potential is and what is anticipated, you may be collecting billions, but again, it'll be just be a fraction of what you could collect. Mm. And I'm still going back. I'm a dog with a bone on this one. Mm. Is it what is collected or is it what is remitted? Um, I, I want to say what you, you, you can know for sure. It is what is not being collected. Mm. And once you collect that, the mechanism, the procedures of remittance mm. to make sure that money is banked, uh, that is another issue that you need better procedures to make sure whatever is being collected is, is, is being banked to make sure there is some prudence. Do we know what the potential, the revenue the pot- potential yes. of Nairobi yes. County actually you is? You can collect uh, 100 million, 100 million per day, mm. 100 million per day, mm. but you are collecting here less than uh, 10 at the moment. We are getting the story, you can collect 8 million, it goes to 12. During the time of uh, Clark, mm. calling a uh, Kiss here. Mm. Uh, you, you, you're hearing the story, you could collect almost uh, 40 million. It, uh, there's some time we're getting the story, it used to be 50 million. Mm. It has now come to 8, 9, eight to 10, 12 11, 12 million mm-hmm. per day. Mm. Uh, are you seeing that? Mm. And you see the, the growth? You see the growth of the city? You see a lot of population has moved here. A lot of businesses, industries have moved here. Mm. And uh, uh, home owners has increased. So we are likely, uh, the estimated p- figure, uh, Muga, is, is over 100 million. We can be able to collect. And once you collect that, Eric, mm. I, can, I can assure you, then uh, Polikapigade and uh, Kaloki uh, will be able to ensure that services are delivered and this will be uh, a city where uh, many people will be willing to, to come, live here and do business. And uh, it, we, we are, it will be a great city. So is that one thing that you want to be judged on? Increased revenue collection, own source revenue for Nairobi. If you're able to collect 100 million, if you hit 80% of that, that's 80 million shillings per day, then you can say, all right, Igathe Kaloki are working. If you are at 50, we say, ah, Badu. Kisia did that 10 years ago. Exactly. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Eric, uh, that is one mark that will be judged on mm-hmm. because we'll be able to come with the platforms to make sure 
we take care of, of the revenue collection and the prudence on, and the management mm. of that particular revenue, to, first of all, to make sure it reaches the bank and also make sure uh, utilization of the, of the same mm. will, will, will be good for the people. Mm. Okay. Prof, we well, thank you very much for joining us today and thank you for coming to tell us about um, what you plan to do should you get elected by the people of Nairobi in 30 seconds. In that second, what I can say, Eric, and yes. the team here is uh, we are a team uh, that uh, we have the energy, we have the vision to be able to reform this city. And we're asking uh, the people of this uh, beautiful city of Nairobi and Adawa County to vote for Polika Pigade and uh, Philip Kaloki. Actually, the ticket is uh, uh, Igade Kaloki ticket mm -hmm. and will be, we promise, better services and uh, uh, better uh, lifestyles and uh, a capital city that can attract investments. Asante. Professor Philip Kaloki, as you've heard him say, is Poli Kapigade's running mate for the Nairobi gubernatorial race. We've been having a conversation with him about what it will take to run Nairobi. Soon we'll also have another conversation with uh, Jeroge Mushiri, who is Johnson Sakaja's running mate for Nairobi, and other candidates as well. Keep it here for more conversations coming up in the next hour on Spice FM and online. We'll shift our focus to like keep your county. Good morning, it's 9 a.m. Spice up your life. The latest news from around the world, 94.4 Spice FM. Good morning, this is Jitwa, Dennis Asato. As a Mueller Moja presidential hopeful, Raila Ding and his running mate Martha Karua have vowed to weed out corruption in the country if they ascend into power in the August general election. Speaking with eight who had narrow county to drum up support for their bid, the two termed their vice as one of the main problems ailing the country, which, if tackled, Kenya will take a different course. While describing his deputy as an astute and efficient lawyer, Odin exuded confidence that with her support, he would fight the war on graft. Now, Migori Governor Kothobado's wife, Helena Diambo Koth, has joined the race for the Migori Women Representative seat. Mrs. Obado announced that she will be on the ballot come August 9th as an independent candidate. She said she wants to complete some of the projects like Kukuni Pesa, which she began several years back, but collapsed, adding that she held the capacity to lead the people of Migori. The Migori governor is facing corruption and money changes in court and his wife has avoided his People Democratic Party in her bid, citing personal reasons. Now, the Nairobi Metropolitan Services may face challenges in launching the Nairobi Green Park terminus after the facility's main contractor complained about unresolved payments. Fairton Agency's contractor Osborne Yogo claimed that they have not been paid for the construction of the terminus, claiming that the payment has been stalled for over a year. Yogo threatened to take the company to court today to stop the launch tomorrow, demanding that the payment plan roadmap be released. NMS accused that announced that the Green Park terminus will commence operating starting tomorrow. The terminal, NMS added, will accommodate between 300 and 350 vehicles at a time and up to 20,000 in a day. Police in Baringa County are investigating an incident at Caprogonia Este where a middle-aged woman's body was found in her rented house. The woman had gone missing only for her body to be spotted dead in her rented house in Capropita, Baringo Central, with visible injuries. According to neighbors, she was last seen with a man who used to frequent her house last week before she went missing. The body has been moved to Baringo County Referral Hospital Mochari in Cabernet as police probe the incident. And still on insecurity and Kongoin village in Kiharu, Moranga County is in grief after waking up to the body of an unidentified man dumped by the roadside. According to Mukuyu Area Chief Adams Kariuki, the unidentified body was unclothed save for his undergarments and one shoe. Mukuyu said the body appeared to have been dumped in the area from elsewhere. Police have launched investigations. And the World Health Organization has said it expects to identify more cases of monkeypox as it expands surveillance in countries where the disease is not typically found. As of the weekend, 92 confirmed cases and 28 suspected cases of monkeypox 
had been reported from 12 member states that are not endemic for the virus, adding it will provide further guidance and recommendations in the coming days for countries on how to mitigate the spread of monkeypox. Monkeypox is an infectious disease that is usually mild and is endemic in parts of West and Central Africa. It is spread by close contact, so it can be relatively easily contained through such measures as self-isolation and hygiene. Internationally, and Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has warned on the diplomatic breakthrough rather than an outright military victory can end Russia's war on his country while pushing its case for EU membership. Zelensky also appealed for more military aid, even as U.S. President Joe Biden formally signed off a $40 billion package of aid for the Ukrainian war effort. As he insisted that his war ravaged country should be a full candidate to join the EU, rejecting the suggestion from France President Emmanuel Macron and some other EU leaders that a sort of associated political community be created as a waiting zone for a membership bid. And the National Super League newbies Mari Sugar left it late to dent Shabana's promotion ambitions with a 2-1 victory Sunday at the Window Green Stadium in a window thanks to a spirited fight back in the second half. Shabana underlined their intent five minutes into the game by taking the lead through wing of Vincent Nyabuto's neat finish inside the area. But a barrage of attacks from the hosts saw them turn the game on its head through Ruben Meter's leveller in the 55th minute before Benjamin Mohamed Baraza slotted home a dramatic winner in in the second minute of extra time to earn the Milas all points on offer. Shabana's dominated early proceedings and nearly doubled the lead through Yusuf Mohammed in the 21st minute, but his towering headed goal was ruled offside to give Mara a fighting chance. This is Newswire. I'm Dennis Aceto. Good morning. Four point four Spice FM. All right, looking a lot, a lot better on the thicker super highway this morning. Coming into the city, we're looking at just past the Utali Drift. Is where you see most of the traffic uh, today. Still continues on Kiambu Road, however. And that Limuru Road situation is looking a little bit better. We're just looking at a little bit of in and outbound traffic as you're getting then towards Parklands and that hole. Uh, still some traffic on Ring Road Westlands today. Wangari Mathai, however, much clearer than it was. But Moranga Road getting into the city, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Uh, Uhuru Highway then going towards uh, the CBD and then Westlands have a little bit of traffic there to contend with. Landy's Road now is thumping. Before it wasn't, uh, but now as you get to the Kamkunji roundabout, it's where you'll experience a lot of traffic today. Um, coming off Jogo Road as well, here and there, but nothing too painful. And Langata Road looks a lot better. Looks like we did well with Monday morning traffic. Let's make this a... Uh pattern shall we so tomorrow's the day where if you're going towards Alvings Quebec and Langata Road you will have to board and disembark at the Green Park terminus nowhere else so you need to plan for that it kicks off tomorrow let's talk more details Spice FM KE on Twitter text 40127 This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga. Researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power. And Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start your nine. day. Good morning. The conversation continues right here on Spice FM and YouTube and Facebook. It's Eric, CT and Ndu. We have a new guest in the studio. Before we introduce him, let's hear the day's proverb. Do not belittle what you did not cultivate. This is a proverb from Uganda. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do not belittle what you did not cultivate. Yes. Don't criticize somebody else's work. Don't. <laughs> yes. 
you don't know what uh, their context. You have yeah. no idea whatsoever. Huh? What you may be seeing mm. is the final output, uh. but what has gone into it or what has influenced the outcome, mm. you may not be privy to. Mm. Yes. I'm be out to a situation room. Yes. Can I may to me your proverb? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ken has says, do not belittle what you did not cultivate. Yes. Yes, and the message is well received. Mm. Yes. We did not build the expressway, so we should not be Op- offering the opinions Ken did not ask us to offer. They should also not belittle the terrible experience that people are going through on the lower roads because they clearly, they, this one. Yes, they will commission <laughs> the expressway when they commission it. Mm. So this nonsense of the situation room having an opinion on the every day which hasn't been commissioned, they said much. So what? Shambaniako. Yes. See, <laughs> May is a month. June is a month. What's the big deal? Mm-hmm. And you can see the expressway and you know it's not going anywhere. Uh, yes. Similarly, we'll not talk about that new Green Park story. Green Park tar- <laughs> grass terminus that's now operational. If you're going up Agwin's Kothak Road and you want to use public transport, you have to walk to Green Park. And yeah. then, so where, so are we saying, because I'm thinking, All right. number 46 mm-hmm. buses are the ones that go up Agwin's Kothak Road. Yes. To yes. 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 So now what are we saying? Okay, so let's assume yeah. that you're coming from Westlands, public transport, right? You disembark at the fire station roundabout. Mm. If you are going to Arvings Kodek, you will walk from there to Green Park. Do you understand? You will not be able to go to railway. So are we walk. saying that um, Kencom and GPO you, mat- buses are not you stopping? You will not get a vehicle that is going to that direction at Bye. Ambassador anymore. Okay. All vehicles plying those routes, uh, you will embark or disembark okay. at Green Park. Very good. Okay. So sure, okay. Mm. Mm. It's fine. We get it. That's, where That's you go just to. one example. Right. And then come the twenty seventh, mm. you know, add another spanner to the works. Other vehicles going in other directions, Langata Road and such and such, will also then change so from railways. And all really exactly. Move from wrong and will also load and disembark at uh, Green Park. The same same place, eh? Indeed. Okay. That's mm. gonna happen this year. Tomorrow okay. and on 27th is Friday. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. So, okay. Remember they did the pilot and there was all this manner of nonsense yep, yep. that was going on and it was raining and people were having a very difficult time. That was the pilot. Yep, so yep. it has happened I think now. Your we are talking about people having a, a hard time. To <laughs> in <laughs> Nairobi, watch a trend like Kipia. Yes. Okay. Literally. The man who wants to be the next deputy governor of Lake Kipia <laughs> is with us in the studio. Michael Waigua, good morning. Good morning to you and your team. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Thank you. That's the hot seat that you're occupying. Yeah. You are Dirito Moredi's running mate yeah. for governor. Yeah. You are not... Dirito Moredi is the current governor. Yes. You're not the deputy governor. No. Okay, so explain this story. No, no, you know... Okay. Uh, oh, thank you very much again. Mm. Uh, you know, the current deputy governor of Lakeipia County is uh, John Moniki. Mm. And uh, he decided to go for the Senate seat. Uh, I think after his five years' experience as the deputy governor, I think he figured out that uh, uh, the county needs more oversight. Mm. Yeah, oversight. Eh? Mm. Uh, of course, um, uh, he then decided to run for uh, for Senate. Mm-hmm. We are friends with uh, John Moneki. Mm-hmm. So it's basically, uh, he wanted, wanted to go for something higher. Okay. Mm. Uh, and uh, hopefully uh, look at uh, our county from the Senate. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, so then the governor, of course, looked for me. We agreed, and uh, I decided to be his running mate. Mm. Yeah. Have you worked? Have you been working in the county government? No, no, no. Really, I've uh, not worked for the county. Mm. Never worked for the county, directly or indirectly. So, but of course, I've been. I've ran for parliament, like EPS constituency. Um, I possibly the governor picked some of my qualities and thought that maybe we could uh, work together. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What made you go into politics? Well, uh, you know what? Uh, uh, politics is a very a powerful tool to change the, uh, the society. Uh, you can be the best presenter uh, on TV, <laughs> um, on radio, and all that, mm. but you may not uh, really. I'm not. I'm not trying to belittle. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Please, uh, we, I like yeah. the way you're going about yes. it. Yes, yes. Uh, please. But go see, on. politics now gives you the ability to influence policy. And change people's lives. Eh? Mm. You can uh, look at the at healthcare across the country. If a member, you are a member of parliament, 
you possibly can pursue laws that can assist our healthcare mm. if you maybe your agriculture and transform many lives across the country yeah so possibly being here you yes you you're popular and all that but politics gives you that mandate mm. to change people's lives in a broad way yeah. Yeah. you, you kind of glossed over it and said well perhaps maybe he's seen some of the things i have done he knows around specifically you must have an idea yeah. as to why you have been the individual that has been chosen mm -hmm. again I've, i think this is the third time i've said this today yeah. is that they're looking uh, just you know conversations that have been had saying the person you choose yeah. as your running mate yeah. matters in an election yeah. matters as you're going forward in terms of if you do get this seat yeah. the work that you will do later yeah. so there must have been a little bit more yeah. than you know maybe he saw what i did <laughs> okay. Um, what did you do that perhaps, I mean, it may have clicked in your head, it must have, as mm -hmm. to why you were selected? Well, I would uh, uh, think that, uh, you know, my expertise, I'm an agricultural scientist, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm an agricultural expert, and I've been uh, carrying out some projects across the constituency. I'm from Laikipia East constituency. The governor is from Laikipia West constituency. Uh, Laikipia West has the largest uh, voter base, followed by Laikipia East, and then we have Laikipia North. Mm -hmm. So I've been running some projects uh, mobilizing farmers to plant fruit trees, uh, basically agricultural projects, eh? mobilizing our people to do things that can put money into their pockets. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm sure that the governor was impressed by that kind of work because really we have a big rural population mm -hmm. and uh, our people are still hungry um, and uh, we, we need to figure out how can we put money into their pockets, mm. food into their stomachs, so I'm sure he was impressed by, uh, by that angle mm. that I was bringing to the ticket. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, our governor has done a lot of work, uh, including uh, doing rural roads, and uh, our towns are much, much better and cleaner mm -hmm. than they were five years ago. So now if you now put into that my agricultural perspective, how we can mobilize our rural areas, help our rural areas to grow, to produce food and money, I, that will now even make it better in, the, in his second five years. Uh, five year term mm -hmm. mm. yeah there's always an issue of uh, demographics mm -hmm. and regional balancing and all we yeah. had a conversation just before you came in with uh, philip kaloki who wants to be the deputy governor yeah. running as a uh, polycampi gathers running mate mm -hmm. igathe i mean the politics of nairobi so yeah. igathe jubilee kaloki waipa uh, igathe kikuyu kaloki kamba yeah. and then we have uh, sifuna uh, from Western, going mm. for the Senate. There was all that balance. Yes. Does that play out in a county such as Laikipia? Definitely. In fact, I would think that is the foremost uh, uh, parameter that the governor would use, mm. uh, any, run, any governor would use to know, uh, to check who the running mate would be. Mm -hmm. First, of course, like for us, we're looking at the geography. Uh, we have three constituencies in Laikipia County, uh, and I've already said that uh, the populations are different. Mm -hmm. So Laikipia West produce a first governor of Laikipia County and the second governor also. Mm. Uh, I know in Laikipia East we've been trying to produce a governor. We've not been successful. But basically when you have a governor from West, um, Laikipia West, the next thing to do is to get a, a running mate from Laikipia East or Laikipia North. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that is the, is the voter base that uh, will be the first consideration. Uh -huh. So Laikipia East has got about 92,000 voters. Laikipia West has got 110 or 20,000 voters. Mm -hmm. And Laikipia North has got about 50,000 voters. Mm. So obviously, uh, the governor is looking for someone who can mobilize his base. Bring the 92,000. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then what happens to the Northerns? No, no. It's not, uh, it's not a matter that the deputy governor <laughs> must come from East. Uh, I'm sure there will be other considerations. The, the current sitting uh, governor has got several ministers uh, who are from Laikipia North. Okay. So really, we only have two positions we are looking at, governor and, and running mate. But there will be other positions that uh, can be used to satisfy the other constituency. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'd assume that um, with all the other, how many other people are running for governor of Laikipia? Uh, we have uh, two horses, uh, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, the current governor, mm -hmm. Deritu Muridi, and the former governor who was defeated in 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have uh, three others, two independents. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, two independents, I would think, mm -hmm. and uh, one running on Kenya. Is any of this from Laikipia North? 
In fact, uh, none from Laikipia North. Mm. Yeah, none from Laikipia North. Two are from Laikipia East, and one is from Laikipia West. Okay. Yeah, so basically, there are two governor candidates from Laikipia East this time. And three from Laikipia West. And three from Laikipia West, yeah. So the ones from East have their running mates coming from West, and vice versa. Yes. In fact, the ones who are running, the governor candidates in East have picked their running mates from Laikipia West. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it goes back to the numbers that you are bringing on the table, mm -hmm. or you are likely to bring on the table. Yeah, so that is, I would think, the first consideration. Mm -hmm. Of course, um, this is not the only consideration that um, would be used. Mm -hmm. I'm sure in other counties, some are looking at um, at gender. Uh, like now, you can see, like at the presidential level, mm -hmm. uh, our Zimio, um function um, i mean as as, as uh, the azimio coalition yeah. has basically picked mother karoa not purely on gender but it has really changed the uh, the dynamics yeah. of the national politics so yeah. um, there are many things that uh, uh, the governor would be looking at to pick the running mate mm. when you say yeah. i want to pick this up and then tie it in with say the position of deputy governors mm -hmm. when you say the uh, Mother Karua's entry as a running mate to the presidential candidate of Azimio has changed things. In what way, in your opinion? Oh, definitely. It has changed things because, uh, one, Mother Karua on her own self, she's very capable. She has a track record. But then she's a woman also. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, in this country, we've not had a woman getting that close to power. So I'm sure there are people who will vote for Mother Karua, mm -hmm. not because of being in this or that coalition, but because of being a woman. I would think so. Mm. Possibly from my, even my wife <laughs> would vote for her just because <laughs> uh, she's a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm sure she will, uh, Mother Kaura will, will tip the scales. Will excite the women base. The women, yeah, this is uh, uh, completely uh, un unusual. Mm. So, so for that uh, coalition, mm. for Azimio coalition, Mother Kaura was uh, not just a running mate, it was more than a running mate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You are part two of the question. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now, when we come back to the gubernatorial race, yeah. what do you think it is, for instance, in your county? Yes. You are coming in will help ignite the voter base so that they will want to give Wanamrevi a second term. Yeah. One, um, I would think that, uh, okay. The governor will not just bring a run limit, uh, that is unknown. And uh, in fact, uh, that's our advantage right now because uh, I've been in, the, in, in politics. I've been doing my projects across Lake Ipia East. And uh, the other horse has brought in someone who's completely unknown mm. in the sense that uh, we cannot really trace with Everyone is trying to check who, who is this. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so basically, that alone will help my side mm. Because there's someone they can associate with. The deputy governor is someone they can associate with. I've been with them. Uh, um, and the other thing, I don't want to say I'm not a youth anymore. Mm -hmm. I was a, a youth five years ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so basically. But still. Uh, <laughs> it's still there. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so I'm sure that's also another angle mm -hmm. that, um, you know, Vijana, you know, like in Nanyuki town, they, they associate, they will associate me with them you know mm. you know so for me i think that uh, brings energy mm. energy and also we need a lot of energy in this campaign because we have a lot of work to do uh so that i believe this will excite uh, like epa's constituents mm. uh to vote for governor Moredi. Mm. Yeah. what's the election question in like epa this time mm. what is it we look countrywide it's about the economy yeah. in some counties it's about security others it's about land what yeah. is the issue in like epa uh, for Laikipia County, uh, well, they are, you know, this economy has affected everyone across board, really, across the country. Uh, but the issues we are facing on the ground is uh, everyone agrees that NM has worked in terms of the governor has... So NM is the governor. Oh. Governor Moravia. Yeah, okay. he has, mm -hmm. he has uh, performed, completely outperformed uh, his predecessor. Mm. In fact, uh, many people would say the difference is like day and night. Mm. If you've gone to Nanyuki town, uh, recently, mm -hmm. you go to uh, Nyahuru town, you'll be surprised. Every road is paved. Mm -hmm. There are no potholes in Nanyuki town. Mm -hmm. And he has also come up with uh, 
more initiatives uh, of uh, uh, an initiative called uh, Smart Town, mm -hmm. where he picked several towns or shopping centers and put in uh, uh, proper planning. Mm -hmm. You need tarmac, you look at drainage, uh, sewerage, and all that. Eh? And that has really excited uh, the people. Mm -hmm. So even if you, uh, there is no project that has reached your doorstep, you have traveled and you have seen for yourself mm -hmm. uh, some of that has been done by the governor. So. Uh, People, so the issue is, has the, the main issue is that has has the governor worked or mm -hmm. not? Mm -hmm. Because they, it, it's so easy to compare the the, the, mm. the, the, the two, the, the current governor and the previous governor. Yeah. So, but uh, my question is, yeah, what is it that the people want? The governor of, could have worked, but yes. has he worked in areas that they wanted him to work? What um, is it that the people want for the next five years from their county government? No, the people, of course, one, we have uh, had issues. Uh, there are several issues. Eh? Mm -hmm. One, uh, maybe I can pick the issue of security. Mm -hmm. Security in like EPR West, we've had issues in an area called Old Moran. Mm -hmm. And I know you also know th this fact. Yep. Uh, so, but uh, so far, uh, the governor has intervened and uh, we've had a, now we have a police post mm -hmm. or station. Uh, in, a, uh, in fact, we will we'll be having a, what do you call it, we liar. District. Yeah, mm. district. Yeah. Mm. Um, all a division around uh, the region that we've had a lot of issues. Eh? Mm -hmm. uh, so basically the police are there. Um, so it's creating some sub-county. Yes, uh, to, make, to ensure that the government services are closer and mm. especially security services are closer to the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> and of course, we co of course, in coordination with the national government. But that is the area that has had issues. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, the issue of water is a very big issue across the county because our rivers have been drying up mm. everywhere uh, because of the prolonged drought. Mm. So then the biggest issue would be water. Water and then water for irrigation, water for food. Mm. And um, in the last five years since the governor got in, uh, there are some water projects that he has uh, put in, in that have really assisted thousands of people. So even on that one, we basically, the, the, the current governor has uh, done his, his job. Mm. Of course, more will be done in the next five years should he get uh, the role. But um, would you say that this development record you speak of is felt in like EPR North, East, West and North? Because <clears throat> we had the MP for uh, like EPR North here. Mm -hmm. And what she told us was what amounts to a tale of war. Roads being in a state that are deplorable. Mm -hmm. school, the provision of just basic education mm -hmm. being again in a deplorable situation. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe from the time she came here until now, there's been improvement in it. But are there parts of like Kipia where there's a feeling among the people that they've been neglected? Because yes, as you say correctly, you, you look at Nanyuki, yeah. you look at Nyahururu, you look at Rumuruti, there are changes. But what about those far-flung places that are not near the so center of the big towns? So we're talking about a large county in terms yes. of geographical space. Let's look at this. Eh? Mm -hmm. Let's put it into context. Uh, what is the size of like Kipia? Mm -hmm. If you put uh, Nairobi County, add um, Kiambu, Nyeri, Moranga, and even hive off some part of uh, Nyandaro, that is what like Kipia County is. Mm -hmm. All those are yes. Laikipia. Yeah, you put them together, mm -hmm. that is the size of Laikipia. So Laikipia is very expansive. And uh, Laikipia North, you know, the way that uh, constituency was uh, brought out, mm. it's a special constituency. Mm. You get what I mean? No. Oh, what do you mean special? In terms of, uh, you know, we are looking at, th th that um, is a word that I'm, well, uh, I could have used, maybe I'll pick it. But uh, like Ipia North, uh, if you look at the population, you see the population is very small. Mm. Uh, basically, they had to be given a constituency for them to feel that they are represented. Mm. The numbers are not there, but still they were given uh, that constituency. So that the uh, national government uh, services can come to them. Roads come. There are some roads that are being done already by the national government. You know, those um, tarmac roads are basically not the county government job. Eh? But there are some things that the governor is doing, mm. like water. He has gotten water all the way from Meru County mm. across a region called Shumvi, that is Edi, and taken that water all the way to Doldo. Doldo is the capital of uh, Laikipia North. Mm. So these are the kind of uh, life-changing projects that the governor has been uh, putting into place. Mm. And of course also the MP, the, the sitting MP has uh, done quite uh, a lot of work on schools, very well done schools, mm. um, on bursaries and, and all that. Eh? 
Yeah, so it will take time. And then I want also to look at um, uh, how the Maram roads, of course, are done by the governor. Mm. But one thing that the governor has done or did is to uh, to use a leasing pro equipment leasing program, where instead of the uh, the county having to buy uh, equipment, mm. the graders, the the tippers, and uh, you know the rollers and all mm. that, eh? mm. so you basically able to lease them. Yes. And reduce the cost of uh, doing a kilometer of Tama, I mean of Maram. Before he got in, uh, a kilometer of, of Maram was uh, was being done at 1.6 million, one kilometer. That is all the work, mm. including I mean grading and uh, compacting. Comp compacting eh? mm. But since the governor got in with that project, he's able to do a kilometer of Tama, I mean of Maram at six, I mean 800,000 shillings. Mm. So basically half, meaning he has paid for the lease. Um, he has paid for fuel, he has paid for the allowances of the drivers, all that. And the and material and everything. Exactly. At half the price that the former governor was doing the roads at. So now we're able to do more roads, more, ma more maram roads, quickly. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now that will help us to, to reach as many kilometers as possible, many regions as possible. And if you go around um, like Ipe, you can see that uh, that has been done quite well. You can basically not compare with what was uh, being done before. Mm. Even the quality of the Maram roads. Eh? Mm. So we hope that in the next five years, and that's why we're asking the people of Laikipia mm. to uh, give the governor and his team another five years, and things will even move faster. Because in the last five years, we can already see signs of uh, There's been a difference. Progress. Yes. Michael Waikwa is the running mate for Diritu Murethi, Governor Diritu Murethi, who's seeking re-election as the governor of Laikipia County. Mm. And Michael then would be the deputy governor should Diritu Murethi be re-elected. We are talking about what a running mate brings to a campaign of a governor and what uh, Michael is particularly bringing. And also looking at the plight of the people of Laikipia and what needs to be done. As we tell you shortly about uh, Kenya Revenue Authority, uh, when we come back out of this break, I mean, we've got to look at, like you've said, it's an expansive county. It has three constituencies. There's one constituency that forms part of the marginalized counties, I mean, constituencies of this country. And there's a lot that needs to be done. And maybe you can tell, just give us what plans the uh, administration of Diritu Muridi has for this particular county, or for this particular constituency, like Kipia North, marginalized um, considered unequal from the other two constituencies, um, the vast, and it's it's totally different. I mean, if you look at east-west and then you look at north, hmm. you're like, are we in the same county or not? Hmm. So those are the, what we'll be talking about. Kerry. Indeed. Um, you know, alternative dispute resolution is one thing that KRA is looking at uh, moving into the future. Every time you see or hear that somebody from KRA is looking for you and your answer is, okay, so now where do I run to? So KRA basically is saying now, you don't need to run. That come to us a less punitive way of solving some of these issues. Come and tell us exactly what the issue is. Let's see how we can resolve this and make it easier for you to um, go about your business while also paying your taxes. 29 minutes to 10. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. Classic soul, R&B, smooth jazz, neo soul, and nostalgic ballads. Make some noise. Yeah. You're listening to Spice FM. The sun is out in Nairobi. We'll see highs of 27 and lows of 16 today. Mostly cloudy conditions at 18 in Nakuru. Highs of 25 and lows of 15. We'll see lows of 13 in Yeri, where it's sunny at 18, going to highs of 25. And 23 will be the high in a partly sunny Eldoret, currently at 18, and we'll see lows of 13. It's mostly sunny in Mombasa, highs of 31 and lows of 25. We'll see highs of 31 as well in a sunny Malindi, coming down to lows of 27. At 23, Kisumu is mostly cloudy, highs of 27 and lows of 19, while Kakamega, mostly cloudy at 23, 27 will be the high, and lows of 15. Out in Kampala, the rain keeps coming down at 23, highs of 27, while the sun is out in Dar es Salaam, highs of 32 and lows of 24. 7 degrees and slightly warmer in Johannesburg, highs of 17 today, down to lows of 5. Lagos is sunny at 24, highs of 31, and we'll see highs of 29 in a sunny Kinshasa, Kinshasa, Kinshasa at 22. 
Okay, Paris, uh, cloudy at 16, highs of 19 and lows of 11. And we're looking at 34 in Beijing. Monsoon season beckons. We'll see lows of 18 and in London. It's mostly cloudy at 15, highs of 19 and lows of 11 and 20 degrees and partly cloudy in New York. We'll see highs of 23 and lows of 14. I like listening to you guys. Yeah, the default radio station in my car in the morning. Even the children listen to you guys. <laughs> I agree Parliament has failed this country. And I will say it again. We have not done what we should have done. We know in this country, the Kenya prison sector is one of the most underfunded sector. The way it is being done and the way we are calling it, Huduma Number Them Semakweli, is because all records will be there. You know, there are people who are now billionaires with uh, no history as to how they got all these uh, <laughs> assets. <laughs> yes. Anything that the president does that is not in accord with the constitution is an illegal act. You know, he shouldn't be doing it and he shouldn't be sitting here and trying to sort of guise it up. I totally believe live transmission of results and allowing Kenyans to be able to view all these results. I believe that it will be impossible to steal elections. The Situation Room. Kenya's biggest The clock says we're getting out of traffic hour, but there's a little bit of traffic here and there on Uhuru Highway as you get into the city and then out uh, towards Westlands. Uh, continues on Rilo Dinga Way today, connecting then with Gong Road, and that traffic still continues for some time. Looking a lot better on Langata Road this morning. Uh, the thicker superhighway also much better. That nook of Pangani at the underpass and Muthaiga Square is where you see the most traffic at this hour, and it's looking a tad better on Muranga Road. So, through the morning, talk to us on Spice FM KE on Twitter, text 40127. Business News with Spice FM. I'm Dennis Aceto. Kenya is poised to draw various economic and social cultural benefits by hosting the first G25 African Coffee Summit starting on the 25th to 27th of May in Nairobi. Themed sustainable development and economic growth in the African coffee sector, the heads of state and government of the 25 African coffee producing countries shall converge to marshal consensus for the integrating coffee as an anchor commodity in the African Union in harmony with the Africa Union Agenda 2063. Kenyans should join hands with the neighboring East African community member states in harnessing resources in Lake Victoria Basin to boost the region's blue economy. This will translate to 71% of the expansive water mass being able to feed its 36 million population spread out in the five EAC member states that is Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda and Burundi who depend on the resources for daily livelihoods. The Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife has launched a new strategy that seeks to diversify the country's tourism offering, moving away from the dependence on safari and beach tourism, dubbed the new vision for Kenya's tourism. The strategy will provide a roadmap for the sector and will shape the future of Kenya's tourism industry by providing a framework that details how to successfully develop sustainable tourism in Kenya. And the government has granted a waiver of import duty capped at 540,000 metric tons of maize, allowing cereal traders to import the grain. This follows a warning by the Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya about an impending maize crisis in the country. In a Gazette notice, Treasury Cabinet Secretary Kuriatani said the waiver is limited only to white non-genetically modified organisms maize grain. For Spice Business, I'm Dennis Aceto. Spice FM Business. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. All right, it's 23 minutes to 10. The conversation continues. Mornings done right. Michael Waikwa. The Richard Moraid is running mate for Laikipia gubernatorial race. Ndu, you had a question for Michael. Right, so I mean, I'm looking at how, I mean, uh, bringing together the county seems to be... Uh, what would be of importance because we already say like keep your east we say like keep your west we say like keep your north mm -hmm. uh, but i also look at what has happened in the county economically mm -hmm. would you say that it is enough and then moving forward let's now consolidate all these efforts as one mm -hmm. is that where the importance is yeah i would say there has been good progress and i'm um, really we're looking at the baseline of two, 2017 
everyone now can see there is progress. Mm. Of course, we can say that um, because also problems have been deep, uh, we have a long way to go. Mm. Yeah, the most important thing for now is that uh, we are, the government has put things into process. Mm. We can see things, uh, people can see, oh, this was done, this has been done. We are seeing signs here. Mm. So the most important thing is that we are moving f forward mm. fast. Yeah, that's, that's what I can say. Okay. Now, yeah. it, touching on something else, which mm. has also been a really sticky point for mm. a lot of folks, is that we're looking at, again, the, the geographical size of this county yeah. is huge. There's also been the issue of large tracts of land belonging to people who are not... Uh, the common man. Indigenous Kenyan. Indigenous <laughs> yeah, Kenyans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right? And it has been an issue. It yeah. continues to be one. It yeah. has been the cry of many people from the county and yeah. saying, unless you get somebody who's going to handle that, mm -hmm. then you're going to continuously have a problem. Yeah. We have had indigenous Kenyans say yeah. that their land has been either, number one, taken ancestrally, or number two, mm -hmm. their cattle, mm -hmm. which again mm -hmm. is their bread and butter, yes. then has also been taken. How then do you think this ought to be tackled? Yeah, we have many ranches eh, in Lake Ipia, mm. uh, very expensive ranches. And then we have the pastoral communities mm. that uh, rely on the, 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 these grasses uh, in order to feed the animals. Eh? Mm. And uh, in a situation like now, where we have had a lot of drought, persistent drought, eh, we've seen many animals dying, mm. many animals dying. And uh, basically, there has to be a working relationship between the ranchers and the local communities. There has to be a cordial working relationship between the two. Uh, you know, ranchers are able to maintain their grasses mm. very well. And uh, the pastoral community, because, okay, they don't have all the land, they, they move the animals, uh, they move the animals over mm. and over where they are, they, are, they are pastures. So there is always those conflicts that uh, they have put the animals into, into, the, into the ranches. But there's something that can be worked out between the ranchers and the local community. They can work hand in hand together mm. so that it's a win-win situation for, for for all of them. These guys have got uh, large tracts of land. For example, they, I've had the governor uh, um, uh, proposing that uh, like since the, the ranchers have the land mm. and they have the resources also, they can vote for resources. Mm. They can invest in dams, for example. Mm. Invest in dams, get that uh, water into these dams, and then uh, sell the water to the county, for example, in a, a fraction, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And this water can be used to reach many homes across the, the county. Um, kind of a public-private partnership, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So but you set up the dams in your land. Yeah, you are an investor. As, you, an, invest as yeah, an investor. Yeah, you, you have land, mm. you have the means, you can set up a dam, mm. then you earn an income, and the community community benefits. Eh? Mm. Mm. There's also the issue of uh, the pastures. Mm. Yeah, the the ranchers can also work out a formula with the county government mm. that uh, these pastures can also graze the animals. Yeah, mm. uh, across those ranches. Eh? Of course, possibly at a at a small fee, maybe. Mm. Mm. Today, if you want to buy hay. Hey, you know hey. Mm. That's nyasi you put into <laughs> in yeah. bales. Yeah. Initially before this drought, it would go for one hundred and fifty shillings. One hundred and fifty shillings for one bill. One bill. Mm -hmm. Today the hay is going for five hundred. Whoa. Yeah. So basically what people are doing is just to try and survive the animal make the animal survive. So but uh, ranchers are very good technology technologies that mm. they can work with these communities and produce grass. Okay. Mm. That then that can be sold to the county government, for example, all the communities, mm -hmm. at a at a very fair 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 price. Mm. The other way is also extension. We can work with the because this this basically are farmers. Eh? Yes. These large scale farmers. Yep. Uh, we can also work closely with them, uh, so that they can also kind of extend their knowledge. Like you can see a, an animal that has been bred inside the ranch and an animal that has outside. been going around. You can see the difference. You can just notice the difference the by value, looking at that. The value. It's yeah. because we also need to have a limit as to how many animals a given land size can carry. Mm. Yeah. With the, so we need to educate our people. 
but really uh, a cordial relationship between the two is so it's important. collaboration between them yes collaboration and what has been lacking why has this never worked is it because the two um, always have an acrimonious relationship or is it that one doesn't see the value for the other? You see, if uh, if the two sides have not uh, agreed on something, mm. and your animal and the pastoralists see the animals are dying one by one, they will basically push the animals into the ranch. Into that's the survival, ranch. okay? Yeah. And that's why we are saying that there must be a way that uh, is cordial. Mm. That okay, the the rancher sees the need to assist this guy, mm. and this guy also sees the need. Not to, to accept to, assistance. Yeah, not to intrude. Uh, mm, or, yeah, uh, there must be a limit as to how mm -hmm. the two can cooperate. Eh? But for me, uh, I've talked about water. Yeah. Water is a, we've gone through, uh, the, like like Kipia North with the governor, and you can see some areas where there's a lot of work that will have to be done. Mm. Because having the, these communities having their own water mm. sources would really help, help them, eh? mm. like water pans. Where do the animals drink? Mm. You know, you know. Even you, you know that uh, you can stay. I don't know which is longer. You, how long can you stay without water? Is it seven days or no, no? no, no, no you no. stay fewer days without water without than water food. than with food. food. Yes. So mm. water is life, yeah. literally. And um, I've seen already the governor doing some water pans across mm. some uh, some of those paths. Uh, but really, the conflict is about uh, property rights. Mm. Property rights. The ranchers have their their property rights. The the pastoralists really is limited on land as to where to put the animals. Mm. Let me ask this question: yeah. Yeah. Is there any other county in this country that can compare with Laikipi when it comes to just the population of cattle? Mm. Well, I would think so. so I have not done this uh, analysis, but I would think Sambulu, who, who, who are our neighbours, mm. um, then Isiolo would compete favorably. Yeah, but all these animals are always ending up in Laikipia. In Laikipia. Yeah. Precisely. Laikipia. No. The ranches, yeah. the because the ranches are... The ranches are in Laikipia. Are in Laikipia, yeah. and yes, they right. are well managed, so they exactly. have yeah. uh -huh. pasture yeah. throughout. Yeah. You see, because they're well managed, it means mm. they serve as the perfect pilot for things to be done for these other owners. Exactly. Of How can uh -huh. we do things correctly? Exactly. Now, why is it then, therefore, that you do not have the sort of setup that would ensure that not only does this happen, it caters for the air, for, for, for the drought seasons, but it also caters for a processing uh, plant where cows now become a, 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 a finished product mm. that has more value to it. Mm. Yeah. You see, there's an entire economy in that yeah. region, this is yes. really what I was getting at, yeah. that seems to have been completely neglected. Mm. I'm saying it's an economy mm. because we export meat. Yes. And yet, the one place where the, it's a region, really, mm -hmm. where we have most of our cattle, doesn't have the sort of infrastructure that you would expect. Yeah. The coast is a destination for tourists. Look at the investment of the coast. Yeah. We look at the game reserves that we have here. Look at the investment there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here we have a region that has the most cattle that in the country. Just Kenya's meat. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, and yet, we are having a discussion about the things that prevent this very process from taking place mm -hmm. and which guarantees that it, it remains a cottage industry. Mm -hmm. And yet, mm -hmm. we have the raw material to actually make it a serious economic concern. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we need to turn this uh, apparent uh, impossibility mm -hmm. into a possibility. Because, like, okay, you're saying that we have the choices of meat, but who is this in Laikipia who does that? Mm -hmm. Really, is the, we're talking about meat that is coming from the ranches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the common man, the pastoris, ha doesn't have that outlet. Uh, and he could. There is no reason why he could. It couldn't. is all possible. Yeah. With the right mindset, mm. um, the right vision of our leaders. But you know, like Kibi has had the most, some of the most important leaders mm. in this country. We have had cabinet minister, for example. These guys have been in power for years. Right. And yes. Speaker of the national yeah, assembly. Yeah. Speaker of the national assembly mm. and all those. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So I think I don't want to get into trouble. But the point is, <laughs> <laughs> brother, you are a politician. Yes. <laughs> uh, you must quote a little trouble from time to time because you are representing your people. <laughs> yes. I. I don't, and that's why you know uh, initially I was going for parliament because really I, I know I could do a lot of things in parliament mm. that could change the the ties of our people, not just like Kipia, but across the country. Mm. But now this is a, a bigger task that I have now to deal with my county in entirety. Mm.
Uh, let me say, there is a lot that we'll do in the next five years. I don't want to say many things, but there is opportunity. When I'm going around, I'm telling my, uh, the, for example, the pastor community, I'm, I'm an agricultural expert. Mm. What I want to do is that tutafanya kazi na nini? Imambo ya mifugo enu kukufa kufa because like you could see, you could see carcasses everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And you can imagine you, you know, you work in Nairobi. A cow, how much do you think one cow is worth? Yeah. It's a lot of money. Yep. So these people are ideally very rich people. But they have been, they, they are impoverished by That wealth weather. is wiped mm. out. Exactly. And one no one season. is um, really uh, looking into their issue. Mm. If you lost your money in the bank, yeah, if you found you, you, you have a million off the bank, mm -hmm. what would you do? There are structures. Now, yeah. the same thing. There are the structures in place to is losing those millions mm -hmm. because of drought. Mm -hmm. So there should be a lot of investment in agricultural extension, mm -hmm. in water infrastructure. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, what I mean about agricultural extension is basically training our people. Mm -hmm. Instead of having a thousand animals, you possibly could still, the pastures could maintain 500. Mm -hmm. You are trained as to how you go about it. And you sell those animals at a better price. Mm. Yeah, so basically there's a lot of work to be done. Mm. Both by national government and the county government. The current governor uh, had, a, had started a, a, a project, uh, he called it feedlots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feedlots, working with the, the ranchers. Mm. That the, uh, and, the uh, and the community, because they also have community land. Yeah. Like you can say, you can, you can, segregate a section or sections of uh, of these pastures mm. you don't allow uh, grazing for mm. some time so that uh, basically the uh, growth of uh, the pastures yes yeah. um then you can also cut the grass bale it or even asking some some people to invest in in that kind of agriculture yeah where you you convert your land into into a feedlot a feedlot so that mm. you we can have these pastures cheaply. You know, all these mm. things that you're saying, Michael, mm. yeah. um, just like you're saying, people like yourself, yeah. who are agricultural scientists and others, have yeah. all these ideas. Yeah. Uh, they have worked in the country, they have worked, they've gone and taken these ideas to yeah. Botswana and the yes. other countries, yes. they've succeeded, mm. but they somehow just never seem to work in this country. What, in your opinion, just from your own professional background and yeah. understanding the politics of, yeah. of our country, what is the problem? What is a stumbling block, for example, to establishing, you know, proper feedlots and, mm -hmm. and a proper mm -hmm. value system mm -hmm. for our livestock mm -hmm. such that we are able to um, produce more for the local market yeah. and to organize our export market? What is it? What's the issue? I would say it's basically lack of leadership. <laughs> that leadership has lacked. It. That's what you're complaining about. Eh? Mm. Yeah, so I would say... Yes, as you see, like in Botswana, these people do their job very professionally. Mm -hmm. We have Kenyans, local Kenyans, you know what I mean, who's go, who've gone to Botswana and they have done their job well. Yeah. Uh, let me say we've not had the leadership or, or the example that we can copy uh, from our local leaders. That's all I can say. Mm. Um, I don't want to impress you by saying that now if I'm, uh, I'm, I'm elected, now I'll be the, be the, I'll be now the one who will <laughs> <laughs> transform and give the example. But it's leadership generally. There are yeah. so many other problems in this country, you know. Yeah. Many other problems we can also use the same, you can ask the same way. Mm. And it will come down to leadership. Leadership for me. Mm. So we, we need to get more and more people into leadership. And that's why I was telling you, mm. uh, politics is a tool that you can use to lead your people. Mm into even may call it greener pastures mm. and that's why if you you have all those ideas but you sticking here or sticking in an office you know for me i have worked before mm. I, I was a uh the agriculture insurance manager at csc insurance group mm. i've worked at ica lion mm. and uh, somehow i still feel yes i was doing a good job but i need to go out there it wasn't impactful uh, enough. The, exactly it was not impactful okay. impactful so that's why we in politics and i hope that uh Especially for me, because of my expertise, I can, we can see what we can do in the next five years, specifically in Lake Ipia, mm. uh, to try and turn around the fortunes of our pastoral communities and the agricultural community, mm. uh, communities in Lake Ipia. Because it's not basically just pastoralism. Mm. Uh, everyone is struggling. You have no food. You have three acres of land. If I asked you what you produced last year in terms of money and food, you cannot tell me. Mm -hmm. 
So people are lying on prime land, but Not they, they, they don't have the, there's no enterprise that they're in, they have no water. So if we give our people water, they'll be able to produce food, mm. they'll produce things for the market. Mm. If we help our pastoralists also mm. to take care of the animals uh, okay. with the right information and knowledge, yeah. they'll, they'll produce. There'll be a change. Yeah, that's true. Michael, they say that politics, all politics is local. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But then there's still the national angle to Kenyan politics, especially at present. Yes. Like Ipia County, even though it's in Rift Valley, yeah. is considered one of the uh, Mount Kenya counties. Yes. Now let's talk about the politics of Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, you've produced two uh, uh, running mates for the main pro pro political contenders. Yeah. And there's an issue about that. Regarding Ashagu on this side, and you said Martha Karua on the other side, and the, how they are energizing mm. the ground. Mm. How is the ground in Lake Kipia? Is the ground in Lake Kipia mm. Kenya Kwanzaa or is it Azimio? <laughs> truthfully speaking. Uh, yeah. Truthfully speaking. Yeah. Only. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I can start with the, the, the Mount Kenya politics. Yes. Yeah, you know, we've seen polls over and over. Mm. And, the, you know, the Kenya Kwanzaa. Uh, coalition has had a lot of inroads. Eh? Mm. Also, Ruto has had a lot of inroads in, 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 in Mount Kenya area. And that we agree. But the tide is turning. Mm. That's for us, uh, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, a while back, you not have spoken about Azimio. You not have spoken about, everyone was m m muttering, you know. Mm. So today, we are confidently telling our people where we are. We are not hiding. Our posters have Raila on them. Mm -hmm. So, we believe by, by election date, Azimio will have the bigger percentage of vote in Laikipia County. So are you saying that there was a time, not Azimio, but there yeah. was a time you would not have been able to sell Ryla exactly. in Laikipia? Exactly. Okay. Let exactly. me ask the question, since we're there, is it that you couldn't sell Ryla or you couldn't sell Uhuru? Uh, is it that we could not sell Uhuru? Ryla or you couldn't sell Uhuru? I asked mm. the question because... <laughs> <laughs> yes, you understand exactly what I said. Yes, yes. Let me tell you, uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was difficult to say Raila because of over the years we've been told all things about Raila, mm -hmm. and pe our people could not separate politics and reality. <laughs> you see, uh, you, you know Raila Odinga, and we've been telling our people. Uh, 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 you look at the track record of Raila Odinga. Is Raila Odinga a good man or a bad man? Mm. In fact, between him and Ruto, who is a good man to the people of, of Mount Kenya? Mm -hmm. And we can easily show. Uh, in 1962, when uh, uh, Raila's father uh, was asked by the colonial government to form government, he said he could not form the government because Kenyatta had to be the leader. He is the, le the leader. Mm. So you're telling our people, that is the first date that we have. Mm -hmm. We can put it aside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we came into into two or two. Kibaki had tried to be president ninety seven. He tried in nineteen ninety seven. And until Raila Odinga came, pulled all the brigade from Kanu and said Kibaki Tosha. Mm. Kibaki will not have become president. Mm. That is another debt we can put aside. Mm. Then there is uh, Ruto. Uh, who came the other day last evening? Uh, that's what we are saying. Yeah. <laughs> the E then yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, 1962, 1902. See, you Kwanza. He a jana jioni. We will still pay it <laughs> along the way. You know what I mean? That one will pay, but uh, along the way. But for now, uh, you know, we used to talk to to, um, to, to say that Raila is Motongori Jamba. Yeah. What does that mean? He's a he's a great he's a courageous know, leader. Courageous leader. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So the, if we pay this, uh, if we can afford to pay the 202 debt. Eh? We basically have sorted out with the debt of 1962. Uh -huh. Just in one go. Then Ruto, maybe in the next 20 years or something, <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we, can, we can sort him. You know what I mean? So basically what I'm trying to say is that, uh, but since Kebaki was competing against Raila Odinga, uh -huh. there had to be a political angle to it. Mm -hmm. We had to tell our people, no, you know, <laughs> then Raila had to compete with Uhuru Kenyatta. At that time, ICC was staring at us. Mm -hmm. So we said, Kama kufunga Uhuru kujeni the whole community. Mm -hmm. So there, must, there was a political narrative, and we, we depicted Raila as a very... And it, it uh, obviously it, it was a very effective yeah, narrative. it was very effective. But now, <laughs> things are, are changing. Mm -hmm. Now look at Malda Karoa in, in the mix. And uh, I believe 
the least that will happen is a 50-50. Okay? The 50, least 50 yeah, uh, in terms of vote split. Uh, vote split in Mount Kenya. Kenya. Okay? But we know it will be a, a better outcome than that. What makes you so sure? Yeah, because we're on the ground, we are talking to people. If you see the meetings we, we, we are holding with the governor, mm. and you see Azimio, you know, yeah. everyone is uh, charged up, you know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> that one you could not have said uh, a while back. So things are, the ground yeah. is shifting. Raila, Amolo, Odinga is now the common thing that we, we are picking from the ground. Right. We are telling our people confidently. And the, the challenge is that we have, so we have to tell our people the truth. Mm. You see, our governor has stood on that side for this time. Yeah. When our leaders in Central or in Mount Kenya, it was always easy to go that side no, for, yeah, for various reasons. For convenience, for example. Mm. For convenience. You know, when you hear our leaders talking about the ground, they're listening to the ground. Mm. When, which other election did we hear leaders listening to the ground? <laughs> yeah? why, why can't our leaders lead the ground? Right. Okay, listen, yes, but tell, offer, uh, guide offer, them. Offer exactly. guidance. Yeah, so. Michael, yeah. we thank you very much for joining us. Asante, sir. Michael Waigua is a director of Murid, is running mate for governor of Laikipia County. He's been here with us telling us how the ground is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> keep, yeah. yeah. And, and what the election is looking like. Asante Sana for joining us. Asante Sana. And thank you for tuning in to Kenya's Biggest Conversation today. We'll be back tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m., God willing, with more conversations reminding you KRA's alternative dispute resolution mechanism is the way to go. In coming days, we'll be telling you more and more about it and bringing in people from KRA to tell you about it. You know, there's no need for running. Don't, no need for it. Why are you running? No, run away. Just talk to Carrie. Have a lovely day, folks. It's now 10 a.m.